I'll probably have to do the recursive thing of checking to see whether we are live, but uh, we are now broadcasting, so welcome to my channel. Um, we are covering college action for the first time on this channel for this season. Um, we are live, in fact. I'm just going to check the sound works, so apologies for the recursive sound. Check the sound works, so apologies for the recursive sound. Check the sound works. There we go, that works. So we are all good. Let's just wait for them to get out of the inducements phase. Hey, Al, how you doing? Um, there we go, we've got an admin in chat already. So <laughs> that Ellie? Yes. Okay. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> So I'm here with uh, Oxtru and uh, Kemal Trax. Oxtru, as, as we all know, is the coach of the Incredible Kemri team. Uh, <laughs> not the coach, rather, the mentor of the Incredible Kemri team. So he gets less credit, but more at the same time. And uh, Kemal Trax... Yeah, I didn't teach him. I didn't teach him those players. <laughs> Kemal Trax is the coach of Clopom, who are one of our many college teams this season. They are a chaos team. Um, had a bit of an unfortunate loss of a warrior, but looking to get back in the mix pretty soon. So uh, welcome to the channel, guys. It's really, really nice to have some new some new voices on here, because um, I'm sure everyone's getting bored of me, Rand, and Kitakaze just doing our in-jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Um, uh, so Claw, your team was Clawpom. Was it a missed next game, or was it a death? Oh, it was, uh, it was a move down. It was a move per bust. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna fire him next next uh, game after yeah. getting the money. If you have the money, yeah. Yeah, we got 70k. Just uh, not have to stake the winnings against birds. I say winnings. Okay, we are in. So um, we will be with the players shortly. Uh, this is Amarello. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that still. Um, my mentee versus uh, Ezeth and the Flying Whales, who are High Elves. So we'll see how this one goes. Looks like the um, Orcs will be attacking first, so we'll keep the camera view where it is right now. And I will just bring up their skills. Not that they have all that many to speak of at the moment, because this is just the second week of college. We have a uh, block lineman. And uh, I think that's about it. Just a, just the apo on um, the orc side. So there is a block line uh, on the flying whale side. On the high elf side of the. Uh, on the high elf side. So there is an additional okay. block kicking about in there. Okay. Um, Unfortunate that the orcs haven't gotten a level up yet. It is, yeah. But at least they could afford the apo, so that should make them a bit more. Did they get the cars, or? Is there any reason why they don't have a level up yet? I think it was just it just lack of cars. So we've got uh, we've got some uh, SPP on a blitzer who scored in the last game, which they won, That's good. Um, and that is about it. Apart from the MVP on a lineman, because linemen like to eat MVPs. <laughs> oh, yeah, own the last game. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. unlucky. So as my own blood will attest, having stolen th the last three and having a total of five, while my black orcs languish with none. <laughs> and yeah. the last college game I played uh, both of our both mine and my opponents uh, loners got MVP very unfortunate ah. okay yep. so we appear to have a, a wandering lad pipe has joined us so <laughs> I think we'll attempt to continue with four of us in here but this may give it oh no he's jumped out again <laughs> I'm not sure what that was all about intimidated by your voice mate <laughs> My voice is very cultural, I'll have you know. Okay, so, so look uh, at I would like here. to see this college coach try to score with the blitzer that already has a touchdown, so mm -hmm. he can get mighty blow or guard. Yep. Um, um, so having mighty blow on orcs is just so important, just to get those chasms rolling. It certainly is. Um, I'm looking at the setup with the high elves, and I'm, I'm not seeing anything that I actively dislike. Um, um, having them one square from the. Hello. I am uh, here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Holy shit. Hello, Lepard. Well, I had to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, the way the high elves are set up now, if it's a quick snap, that means that the orcs can get three blocks on yes. the two linemen that are in the front. If yeah. they set up that way. It is, it is a little bit painful um, if that is what happens. Um, because they are set up too far forward um, to defend yeah. properly. 
Um, I would have liked to have seen them a couple of squares back to minimise the chances of that happening. Just um, one square back. Yeah. Is needed really on the side for the yeah. high off coach if you're listening. I think that's a bit uh, of a rookie mistake there on the LOS blocks. He's going to have to punch up, not, not to the side. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a bit of a strange setup for the Orc team as well because he's really defending the sides. Uh, so maybe he's worried about a blitz. But um, I would have. Maybe he wants to just get the blocks on the Black Orcs to get them Kaz SVP. Well, being as this is my mentee, this is actually something that we worked on, so um, we looked at it. Uh, they're also set up to block with no block, which isn't optimal, that yes. is true. Exactly. But what we are looking at here is we are looking at not being too aggressive and trying to kind of hold the field down and control things. So we may well even see him not take all that many blocks this first turn. So we get an extra team reroll. Um, this is something that we discussed. Um, and it was kind of conditional on how he set up to begin with. Um, I personally am not too concerned about it, but we'll see how it goes. Um. I always like to make it so that my first block is with block. Yes, uh, I, agree. I have the skill. Yeah. This is something that we discussed as well. Thing. So I, I'm trying to prioritize him to, to take hits with block as much as possible, because regardless of getting Blackhawk levels, it's better really to be driving forward and hoping that the removals work out for you. But even right, if that isn't yeah. the case, even that if that isn't the case, as long as you're taking as safe blocks as possible, then um, you should be able to cover your bases, if you know yeah. what I mean. And also just the math on the two die blocks, um, mm -hmm. you have a 55% chance to knock the opponent down yeah. um, that block. Uh, so that's a 45% chance that they're just pushed away or that it's a turnover, right? Yeah. So, so that's also why having block on the LOS is quite useful. I like that your mentee is moving before blocking. Yeah, we talked a lot about turn order and we talked a lot about um, plugging the gaps so that uh, there aren't elf holes to be run into and exploited. So hopefully he will have taken that on board. Um, we also talked about the importance of securing the ball. So. If he would have blocked first with the blockers, if he would have put uh, block uh, pieces on the LOS to block first, then I think it's I think it's better to block first, not move. So you can mm -hmm. then see if you block or if you have to blitz uh, a, a player on the LOS. I, I think it's better to do the LOS blocks first. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's six of one and half a dozen, a dozen of the other. I like that what he's doing here is he's moving things around rather than taking the hit straight away. So Obviously, the, when you get that, that's the free re-roll gone. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, think the, uh, I didn't I think like that cage. at all. I mean, that's just less likely to work than the yeah. die. The cage in the, in, in the back there seems unnecessary to me because the elves aren't going to come from the back or from the top, or m maybe from the top. Yes. I, think if, I think if you put the players uh, two uh, two gap two gaps in between. If you just mm -hmm. screen off your half, I think that's better than yeah. the players back engaging. I, I, I feel that this may be um, my advice getting misconstrued ever so slightly, and he's still defending it. Though there's a possibility of a blitz. I know that he was really really paranoid about the elves getting around and running circles around him. Yeah, and also so, another just a I think sort of a big mistake is that he didn't block diagonally. He blocked straight yeah. ahead. Um, if he blocked diagonally, he would have been able to get a push on that first elf he blocked. Mm -hmm. and That's what they meant. It, he he should have get another. He should have offset the the black orcs. If he was gonna just put the uh, black orcs up there, not, um, I mean, usually put five players up there. Yeah. Three uh, blockers and the two orcs to then clean up. If you gotta uh, block sideways, mm -hmm. uh, you gotta offset them. But the way he did it, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And also. The, the other thing that we talked about was keeping his blitzers free and mobile so that he can use them basically as a roving hit squad. So um, tying up the elves with the black orcs is in some respects safer because it takes a lot of effort to get a three dice on them. Yeah. Um, he lacks a I lot also, of block. I, I dislike this... Uh, uh, I don't like that he base, followed up. This base that he did mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end because now he gives the elves an easy to die yeah. on the black orc. Yeah, which was uh, which is um, unfortunate, but um, we'll see what comes of it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because 
I would have preferred to have him that. keep him there so that he wasn't offering up the free block and keeping that two space uh, tackle dead zone uh, tackle zone dead zone there so that anyone who did try and dodge through would get crumped. Um, as it is, we can see some more, we can see some elves running around the side, but I think that would be premature because they are then at risk of getting hit without really any support. Yeah, because right now, if this two die block is a stumble or a pow, he can actually screen off mm -hmm. uh, between the orcs, which I don't know if he wants to do, because he'll probably get just based on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an option for him. So I, I think he, it would be better if he would have uh, chevroned the, not just put the two orcs in a line, but uh, chevron there, uh, you know. Uh, so even if one one would be down, the other one still uh, screens. You know what I mean? I mean. Yeah. Okay. So we are seeing him go aggressive. Um, the gap in between the cage and the front of the line does concern me somewhat, but there are enough pieces back here to deal with that um, and for him to reposition fairly safely next turn, fading uh, players really making dodges through. Agreed. So we will see where this takes us. But I, I can't see a massive amount of offense coming from the elves here. Looks like he may even be planning to perhaps blitz uh, Bilka on the left here, um, and then maybe take the chance on the two die onto Anti with Ollie the lineman in the middle there, um, and that may be all the punches we see from this turn. But we will see. Could confound me in my expectations. <laughs> I think I would have rather blitz the black orc mm -hmm. on the right side than the blitzer on the left, just because he doesn't have block. You, you have to give another guy to assist, but it's more likely that you knock him over. And they have the same armor value. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and it was one of the things that we kind of talked about as well, is that kind of offering potential blitz targets away from the action can be a very good thing to do because it means that you are essentially pulling players out of position to hit things that don't necessarily matter for the play right at this very second. Yeah. So here the we go, he's actually running might, round and back. He... Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you go. Over you there. My bad. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I don't think uh, the elf uh, should have I mean, if he wanted to put pressure, if he wanted to be aggressive, he didn't put enough pressure either. He just did it. He just did it. He just did it 50 50 on both ends. He's oh, now running away go. and he's basing the. And he's having to use a reroll and he's just getting a push out of that one. Yeah, I don't know why he is basing so hard on the left side here. Um, It doesn't strike me as a particularly good idea. It's like he's done what I've said is a big flaw in a lot of people's games quite a few times which is that he has decided to be aggressive but not aggressive enough so he's putting pressure on the wrong part of the pitch because he's being aggressive and as a consequence he's not really putting pressure where he needs it you now have an isolated blitzer out back here I mean the best he can do is support him with an unleveled lineman um, he's not put pressure on the two players who were isolated on the right hand side here which means this should be relatively simple to get out of and these players on the left hand side aren't really putting any pressure on at the moment so yeah, right now he can just cage up five yeah, squares forward exactly uh, no so yeah I, I think that was a fairly ineffective turn from the elf player i mean you can literally ignore this blitzer for now as long as you can strengthen the cage up enough that it's not going to be a problem um him getting in behind and he's got enough players free to do that so you're looking at perhaps a cage right in the middle of the pitch here um, the, yeah, you, you gotta move the blitzer first, so yes. you get them one extra, yeah. Um, and he's taking his time, which I approve of, it's something else that we discussed, like not rushing it, just taking your time, having a think. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a good skill for people to get, it's not one that I'm particularly good at, unfortunately, but uh, there we go. Um, no, he's not like that. Himself. Very much Sometimes I don't. you can block yourself with the cage by mm -hmm. moving your players too early. No, no, I don't like this at all. He's moving... No. He's, he's moving his screen back. 
He is caging oh, up the that, Black Orcs, though. I think he, yeah, I think that's the plan. Like, use yeah. the Black Orcs for the cage. Because you would need you yeah. would need a elf on each corner of each of those Black Orcs. But he already has the players back there. He could just move the players up. Mm -hmm. he, the way he's moving his players back, that goes against the whole Blood Bowl game plan. Gotta, <laughs> I, I, he is giving up space, that's true. Yeah. Um, the cage is safer. Uh, yeah. yeah, but he could have... The you must have really the... scared him with elves. What did you do? <laughs> I think it's he's played elves in spin a couple of times, and he he's not oh, really yeah. been able I to think... deal with them before. So he's he's probably going to play more cautiously in this game than perhaps we would like to see. But um, I would uh, I kind of it is a bit overcaged. But I would rather he be overcaged hey, than undercaged. If you're scared of elves, uh, high elves are probably the elf team that you should be the least scared of because they don't have any of the G leap or any of those skills yet. Yeah. Or frenzy for witch elves or whatever. Pro elves, right? They're worse. Pro elves are better. Pro elves are better. And they start with more skills. Sidestep. Sidestep is horrible. But they die faster. Yes. Yeah, and sidestep. Yeah. Sidestep's a big problem. A small mistake here is if he hadn't moved the Blitzel that he just moved, he could have. This push could have been another block. Yeah. And also pushing again, he's basing orcs against players that are not on the ground. So another block for the elf coach. Mm -hmm. which is <clears throat> yes, um, that is accurate. And um, it's also something we discussed. Um, we talked about the idea that if he can um, tie up a player with a player with a lineman who isn't actually affecting the cage then it's worth doing um, the issue here is that he has given away a lot of ground on that right hand side which means that the elves can now put put in some pressure but he has a pretty solid cage here um, with a couple of floating you... blitzes oh yeah I don't think the high elf is getting the high elves are getting in into that mm -hmm. cage anytime soon if he was, if he put, a, if he left left the screen back there, he could have. I mean, those those bl those blitzers beside the cage are kind of, they don't fulfill the purpose. You know, it it would be better if he stayed back on the LOS, uh, put the screen up because right now, I mean, sure it's an extra line of defense, but no elf is gonna blitz through that. They're just gonna yeah. wait and, you no, know? and he could have uh, supported on the on the left side, which would have given him uh, some blocks. Yes. Correct. And also, I think a lot of people overestimate Armor 9, uh, mm -hmm. especially when they start off with Orcs. Like, oh, Armor 9, Armor never breaks. It but does, it's paper. If, <laughs> keeps, if your opponent keeps rolling dice, eventually he keep, keeps getting blocks. Yeah. Three, eventually he's gonna break something. Yeah, I think we may see him move into columns here. But uh, he's again, not, he's not gonna advance very easily because he hasn't done much. I mean, he he protects, sure, but he's basically a turtle right now. He has, he has yeah. no offense. The orcs, I mean, uh, it, elf. Exactly, elf. Ellie. I'm play. I play lizard man in G man, and I can get, I can tell you, lizard men break armor so often. It's ridiculous how often they get injured. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, armor nine is paper, as they say. Armor seven is um, adamantium. Um, <laughs> my last couple of games can certainly attest yeah. to that. I played wood elves and they out removed me, and I played Amazons and they out removed me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's just how it is sometimes. But that's also the thing. Like the skills, like dodge and block, help you a ton. Mm -hmm. uh, staying alive when you have armor seven. Usually, yeah. the armor nine guys don't have those skills. Uh, which is why they get injured sometimes more often. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think the high elf player has used his blitz, has he? No, I'm not really seeing where it's going to come on this one. Oh, here we go. He's going to blitz through. So, gets a push. Okay. Where the blitz there? I don't. He had a block. I mean, he doesn't have to move that guy. He, he was perfect screen. Mm hmm. He's focusing on the columns. I'm wondering if that's what he and his mentor, if they have one, focused on for this one. Um, columns defense is a tough to grind down. 
Um, but we will see how Amarello deals with this. Um, I'm wondering if I we'll see an attempt at a dodge out. The lines, the lines are a good uh, strategy, but I think if he left he, the elf there, I think it was still good enough, right? Mm -hmm. If he left the elf there, it was good enough. Um, he not wasted exactly, the because the black orc. Oh wait, no, the bits. In, I think it's, it was fine. Yeah, I think you're left. Yeah, I mean, I... he doesn't have he doesn't have anything else to bleed, so I guess might as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the temptation perhaps could have been to um, take a blitz with, um, with Joe, the blitzer at the back here, against Pum. Um, I mean, it's a one die, but it's a one die with block, and then reposition Joe somewhere, because as it is, he's now going to have to just throw a block and stay roughly where he is. If it doesn't drop Pum, then Pum gets up and just ties him up for another turn. I mean, it could dodge out, um, but none of these high elves have dodge, so they're relying purely on, on the Agi. Um, he's already burned a reroll, so we'll see what happens there. Right, running well, I, f I feel like even if he does miss the dodge, he still wants to try to take it, maybe. Yeah. Because this turn he can just get two die down. He could even get blitz by one of the blitzers, mm -hmm. and you well, kind of want to avoid that. Yeah. So yeah, if I had been the high elf team, I would have definitely tried to dodge and reposition with that beat. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think that, that he's wasted where he is at the moment, and it means rolling dice to get him out of there. That you could have just used at the end of your turn there. And just in the back, it. the one standing next to the lineman. Mm -hmm. I think I would have just taken the one die block. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Stay melds as the dodge, uh, and you might injure the other guy. Yes. So, I think what we'll yeah, see is really we'll see this option was grind forward. Yeah, I, I I would agree. I feel like the only one option you probably wouldn't have taken was just keep it there. And that apparently is the one that was taken. So, <laughs> also welcome, Lead Pipe. Nice to nice to see you here yeah. too. Thanks. I'm sorry. I had to run a little bit to get here. That's all right. Yeah, at the moment, at the moment, Amarillo is basically daring him to come at him, and uh, the elf has declined so far, really. So we'll see where he heads to. These are two relatively fragile columns as well. So, uh, given that they're unleveled linemen, so a lucky removal on here can kind of break those apart. Um, I think it would be best to go the left side mm -hmm. because uh, there is no column there and he has he can just blitz and uh, block oh All that's right. the blitz oh he could have blitzed uh, the other uh, the alignment on the side away yeah that would be better I think okay so we're getting aggressive with the cage here and basing it um, hopefully he can remember the lessons that I taught him about properly screening to prevent them from getting easy blocks in there. Okay. But um, I, I I like that he is finally using these black orcs mm -hmm. to uh, base the screen because that's how you break it up. You force the elves to make like six dodges. Yeah. And eventually they'll fail something. Mm -hmm. What I uh, don't like here is um, putting that black orc next to a block player. And alignment, so it'll yes. be a one die. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm hoping that he will take the lesson from seeing that that, that was perhaps not the right move to do um, unsupported. It could easily be a two die that one because of the positioning there. So yeah, uh, issue is if it's a two die, he can't one die the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can I can see just like one die push and then the one die sack. Yeah. If he wants to, which he might not go for, but it's a good way of putting the orcs on the back foot, I think. Well, they're really compact as well. Yeah, they are very compact. Yeah, that's uh, that's correct, El, um, Ellie. We'll see if the elf coach has spotted that. If he gets a knockdown. I don't think he... does he need a knockdown? 
one move a guy in, one die the black orc. Move the lineman left, the black orc. Ow. Oh, I see. I see what you mean, Ellie. Yeah, that's true. He can even two die the black orc. Yeah. And then the lineman. And then blitz in with the one die. I see what you mean, Ellie. Yeah. But he doesn't need to get a pa he He only needs a push. Because if it's a push, he can put him next to his lineman on the right side there, next to the blitzer. Yes. And then he the tackle zone is cancelled out, and he can get a one die easy. So. Okay, so here we go. This is okay. going to be the hit on the Blackhawk. Yeah, it's nice. say his yeah, side. Yeah, that's good. That's good from the elf coach. So the, I think the problem the orc coach did here was ob obviously the mistake of placing the cage corner. It would have been better if he maybe had the cage one square further down and then used his black orc facing here, but the base then is less risky because if he's knocked over, yeah. the cage isn't set on. Yeah, um, I, I would, if he was going to put it there, um, if you are going to put it there, then I probably would have liked to have seen Bavo come in to make it harder to get the um, get in on the ball from that side. Yes. So if he'd stepped in yeah. one more step diagonally exactly. up, then that would have prevented that from happening so easily. Um, I believe. Um, it's not a horrible position as yet, so um, we will see what the elf coach does here. It mostly depends on whether or not the elves can actually bring down the black orc, but yeah, if I had been the orc, I definitely would have put some support on that know. corner. Yeah. It's like what we're saying, he doesn't need to knock the black orc down no. right now. He just needs to push. Yes. I'm not sure about basing the blitzer with the thrower there. That seems an odd choice, but uh, maybe we'll see what that's going to accomplish in just a moment. I think he's... yeah... yeah, I don't know. I mean, it could be that he's just asking to get hit on the thrower, but it's also... You have to keep in mind that maybe he's gonna just... Well, how do you say this? I'm sorry, it's just English is not my first language. <laughs> Okay, uh, if he can put enough pressure on the ball, maybe the orc will not have enough people to support a block on the thrower. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. You mean just like basing all of the orcs? So yeah. That, uh, Which is an incredibly yeah. risky thing to do. Okay, so we get the push. Pushes him back. Yes. I hope to the right. Oh, no, that's nope. the long spot. Pushed him in the you wrong direction. Him to the right. Yeah. I don't think uh, that was a mistake. Because now he can't one die at the ball. Yeah, wrong yeah. push. Uh, he can still. Followed. No, that's actually. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, no hit on the ball now. Uh, well, uh, elf dodging chain pushes maybe. He can chain push. He can chain push. Um, but he it's a chain push with a red push. dice. He can turn it into a one die chain push, but then he has to dodge. Yes, that would involve yeah. dodge. Uh, I think I would like to see a two die block on a black orc here. He can do that if he wants to. And then if that's a knockdown, he can. Uh, or even if it's just a push, he can two die the blitzer. And that's a chain push on the thrower actually next to mm -hmm. his blitz. He can get a one die that way. I'm guessing that he's using Eli as a safety here. Um, we may see so Rivaris see come back as well. Yeah, Rivaris comes back yeah, as if well. You, if you can see the, the elf that's available on the right side, that guy, if he moves one square to the left... Oh, mm -hmm. no, that's wrong. If he had moved one square to the left, two died the Black Orc. He could two die the Blitzel push, and uh, and then push the Blitzel into the Flower, into the Lineman. Yeah. And then the Flower would be next to his uh, block Blitzel. I don't see the, the elf purpose team. of that blitz. Just a relevant blitz. I think. Yeah, completely irrelevant blitz. So, um, yeah. He does nothing. He can just rebase that elf. Yeah, um, and I think this is something that me and Amarello discussed before the game as well. If you can kind of get him to make irrelevant blitzes, then you are putting yourself in a good position. Um, Azith seems quite hesitant and is running out of time as a result. So there's yeah. a lot of players there who didn't move. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Making, making didn't your, quite uh, see the play. 
yeah. yeah. Making your opponent do irrelevant blitzes isn't isn't a strategy that usually works. I think it's it's like these are a few new coaches. Yeah, so. I I do smell elf blood here. I would I would agree, Ellie. Um, the issue I see here is that it's going to be difficult to clear off that ball without taking some risks. Um, oh. I don't even know if you need to clear off. Like, you just basically yeah. punch. Yeah, you just basically and punch. And, yeah. and uh, try to, to go for the removal. Yeah, meat is back One on problem. Menu. One problem for your mentee uh, is that he's way too compact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he needs uh, to spread out a bit more as much as possible yeah. because chain pushes here could wreak havoc exactly. on him. Yeah, exactly. There was a really nice play that the elf coach could have done here, which unfortunately he missed. Uh, yes, that's that's why it's college. It's hard to see. It's hard to see chain. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He takes the risky block there. Um, I think using the reroll for that one would have been a valid thing. But again, we're back to the situation where that black orc is now um, based on three sides. So he definitely needs to move someone up in support and learn the lesson from before. Um, might even be tempting to use the blitz to clear off one of those the um, uh, des from that area. Um, just so that you're not getting that three die on the black orc easily enough. Again, um, I would hope he'd learn from the mistake there. Okay, so he's starting to spread things out a little bit. Uh, Removal is going to be tough to find because of the lack of mighty blow on each side, but all it takes is that one lucky dice roll. Um, and I think with the elves here, a stun, just a stun, could really hurt their defense. Also, yeah, the push to the right there I didn't like because now he can't get a assist uh, in for his bitzel. It's a yes. one die right now for the bitzel. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as as Ellie's pointed out, if he blocks the lineman in the lower left first, he can chain push the black orc almost totally clear with the blitz. Okay. Oh. oh, double skulls, that's unfortunate. But that is Nuffle's um, delight sometimes. At least he's kind of cleared things out a bit so the chain push isn't so easy to accomplish. Um, and yeah, not like that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Very not like that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I'm not, I'm not sure why he... Did that over the two die block on the blitzer in the left with the black orc, or even just lineman? That's more likely to succeed. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's um, prioritizing hitting with block, which is something that we talked about. Um, maybe too much, but uh, it's a learning experience. It's a learning curve. It is. It's, you know, knowing when to break definitely. The, um, when to break the advice you've been given situationally, etc. Like. I came the menti. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And knowing when to hold them and knowing when to fold them. <laughs> yeah. Also, okay, so we have two players down on the ball now. There is a possibility for a chain push here, but um, it would take a little bit of orchestrating. Now he can get a one die on the ball. Mm -hmm. Which again, hopefully he'll see it. It's Actually. Fine. No way, yeah, it is a one die, right? Yeah, you will have to base this blitzer on the bottom there to get it. No, he just has to two die the black orc. Two die the black orc, and then um, if it's push or a uh, knockdown, then you can get a hit on the ball from there. If he pushes it to the right spot, right, this time. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether he pushes him. Yeah. But I would push him to the left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's really not making it easy for himself. No, he's really not. <laughs> Unfortunate for him. Uh, Andy says hi, by the way, Upstro. So. Oh, is, oh, is that. Oh, Bombsard, are you Andy? Okay. Good to know. I was wondering who Bombsard was. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's my mentee. Mm -hmm. So, um, he's the Kemley coach. 
Yes, indeed. Oh, he's the, the Camry. That's so cool. The, the scary Camry coach. The the, the Camry coach who uh, outratted rats. Seventy five percent chance on most of those plays. But yeah. Well, I mean, for a Camry coach to um, play against a team in the rain and then play against a rat team and to win both is pretty impressive. Oh, he won in the rain. What? Mm -hmm. Wait, was his first match? Wait, Andy, was your first match in college in the lane? Oh. Just a stun. I thought it was just a spin game. It might have been. Um, might have been a spin game then, but he has won sure. a game with Kemri in the rain, which is <laughs> something not everyone can say. I mean, yeah, say. that's impressive in and of itself. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, so setting up for a 2 die hit on the black orb, but no blitz on the ball this turn because the blitz went in on a lineman who was away from the cage for some reason. Oh, that's a big stun. Is the stream lagging for anybody else? It's my... Uh, it's, I had to it's uh, refresh and it's oh, lagging. Uh, yeah, th there may be a delay on it. I'm watching this live. Also, um, it's... Oh, is the stream dead? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Possibly. Oh, that's strange. Um, let me see if I can figure out what's going on there. Just bear with me. Could be internet issues. Uh, I can still hear you guys fine, so the internet is working. Um, I'm just well, running my... On my side. just yeah. want to say that uh, I think the orc, your coach messed up. He opened up the cage right now, uh, and uh, the ball is now based two times. I okay. I don't like this. Oh, so I can't see the stream. I'm just, I'm just saying uh, what the yeah, static I'm, picture. Yeah, I'm getting a uh, network yes. error apparently. So um, I'm not sure what's going on because everything else seems yeah, to be it working was fine. Yeah, it's just talking about the um, the general strategy of the orc coach. He um, caged up really um, far back mm -hmm. the first turn, and then he moved forward the next turn, and then the third turn he went really aggressive on the. Um, the line of the elves yeah. with the cage. Uh, and that's sort of like uh, the polar opposite of what he did in the beginning, because in the beginning he was really safe. And then maybe he got a bit overconfident, I'm not sure. Yeah, there appears to be some sort of issue with Twitch. It's not an issue with with my internet. Well, that's a shame. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can get back into it now. Um, it appears to have come back to life. Um, but I have lost my chat. Very strange. Um, is it working again? Try refreshing your page, folks. Seems like chat is working. Yeah, chat is working. Um, I've lost my chat app that sits over the top of the stream. Um, strange. Yeah, very strange. Um, the stream seems to come back online as well, from what I can see. Now. So, just very strange. Apologies for that, everyone. Armor break. Mm -hmm. There we go. Only a stun. Only a stun. I'm slightly... Um, You're slightly I'm behind. Slightly... Um, it's because of the distance from the server, because this is a Euros game. So oh. American coaches no, 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 tend I to... I meant have... that I was slight... I'm slightly in favour of the high elf coach, because ah. I play high elf myself. <laughs> Fair enough. In uh, clan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has somewhat opened up the... Um, Opened up the cage here, but uh, there are possibilities of kind of re-attaching it. I like the cage this. anymore. Yeah, right? I like he this took, too. He took the blocks that he could he could get, and they were all knockdowns, and he got mm -hmm. two stones too out of it. So. It's not a cage anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, like he walks in the way of the ball. Yeah, it's just it's just a zog off. This is ours. <laughs> um, I will try and. Yeah, yeah. Should... Sorry about the lag, and I apologise for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to commentate on the stream itself from now on, I think, and then I will just use my um, my mouse to move things around if I need to. But um... I think you should have blitzed the the uh, with the blitzer. He just stood up. He should have blitzed the elf, and then take the blocks on that other elf that's facing the ball, and then move the thrower back <laughs> and re-establish the cage back. But uh, it's. I think it's too far down the field, and I don't think he can easily score this half. No, he can't. Uh, he can still score. 
He can still score. Green. He's still got time. No problem. Green, he can it's score, just... but he'll have to do sick handoff plays. Uh, yeah. Not even that. He still has three turns. It's next turn. He really needs to worry about moving forward. Yeah, next turn he really needs to be moving forward, um, which is something yeah, that we discussed has, as well. He has a neatly screen in there, so it's not going to be easy, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fair enough. But the elf coach is kind of doing the right thing. I mean, yeah. he gave up a lot of one dies on the ball, but maybe he felt that the one dies were too risky. Yeah, but that kind of has a point. If uh, if he manages to score in three turns with Kemri, he can score. Um, and <laughs> we are seeing a lot of based elves here. I mean, personally, what I would do here is I would risk because you have the reroll the block with the ball carrier. If you're not going to be moving forward this turn, uh, instead he's blitzing with the black orc. Um, Gets a push. That's not horrible. Um, he could have blitzed with the blitzer. Though. Yeah, I would have liked to. Have, I would have liked to have seen him um, use the thrower to hit the elf who was basing him, and then uh, to blitz with the blitzer to blitz off the elf next to that elf. Uh, but if um, at all possible, you should be blitzing with blitzers. Yeah. Yeah, but um, this is uh, this is. Very, very cagey, no pun intended, or actually pun very much intended, because that's basically how I roll. But um, we'll see how he, if and how he extricates himself from this position. I see another, I see another, um... Uh, <laughs> Juju blitz with the blitzer, hands and hands. <laughs> he has another one die block here with a chain push. Yes. If he moves yeah. a lineman behind the black hole that's on the ground, Mm -hmm. And then moves another lineman to assist on the blitzer. He gets a two die block there, pushes the thrower into his lineman. Yes. There are no no orcs left, right? Unless he moves that uh, one on the side, on the right side. What do you mean? I mean to to base the elf to the block. Are you talking about the orc coach or the elf coach? Oh, uh, I think we uh, yeah. I think there was a dissonance. Yeah, um, my my impression here is that um, is that the elf coach hasn't quite got a handle on chain pushes yet. They are pretty advanced, to be yeah. honest. Um, I think you that need the, to see them in a game before you get used to them. Part of the issue here is that because of the lag, you're probably hearing things before they're happening. So, <laughs> which is probably going to be a bit confusing. Although it seems to have caught up a little bit now. He's doing a good job defending the elf. Coach. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I'm not familiar with elves. I, I I assume he did a good job because the or or, or rather the orc coach did a bad job pushing. Mm. Um. Yeah. The follow there was a big mistake because he's now stopped himself from having that hit on the ball, um, and committed more elves into that big scrum in the middle. Um, and I guess we will see what happens here, but. Um, if it's going to come down to getting punches in, then I would back the Orcs in that respect. I think there's a possibility that following that up actually has given a chance to like start pushing through. Oh, never mind, that Orc goes down, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think his strategy is more to just stop the score of the yes. Orcs instead yeah. of trying to score himself. Which is a bit of a flawed yes, strategy for an elf. <laughs> you should be trying to nick that ball. But it's good pressure. Yeah, it's for sure. That, um, I, uh, I don't know. Not, not good pressure from the orc. No, it's I, good pressure from the elf. I yeah. Think. If it works, it works. Mm. It's true. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like... Yeah, but the orc has to pressure. It's his offensive drive, mm -hmm. you know? It doesn't matter if the elf pressures this. Elf can pressure on his drive. And then yeah. it's 0 0 0-1. Um, I do think that the, the pressure that he's applying here gives the orcs the possibility of getting some removals. That sounded like something nasty happening um, in the background, so we'll see what takes place on the stream. <laughs> um... Yeah, totally unnecessary yeah. GFI. Yeah, like, like the, the way that the elf coach is playing now, um, this this way you're playing. If you're listening, elf coach, um, 
like you're giving a lot of pressure on this guy, but you need to expect to lose a few players. Yeah. Um, yeah, did we miss? We missed something there. I missed something there. I think. Like, is the stream lagging? Is the voice? Are the voices lagging? Um, I'm not sure what's happening right now because I think the stream may be lagging ever oh, so slightly. Oh no! I see it now. Oh, and that's a problem because you have just left an entire wing open for the mm -hmm. for the player to reposition. Yes. Yeah, you have. Yeah, so um, there is certainly a chance to me. exploit here. I just mean the voice. The voice. It feels like we're kind of like talking about completely different things sometimes. <laughs> I, I felt a bit confused and then I noticed that the stream was 30 seconds behind. Yeah, yeah the stream that's is what it is. <laughs> the stream is 30 seconds behind. I'm just not watching on, on the client anymore at all. Yeah, oh, I'm watching on the stream now oh, as well. Oh, okay, so some people are yeah. watching in client, some people are watching... Because I was watching the stream. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're we're all watching the stream now. I think so. I think we've Got kind of caught up. Oh, like, that makes sense. Why I I because I was like, wait, I'm not talking about that at all. <laughs> then somebody, <laughs> okay, all right, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm watching the stream. Yeah, Ellie, exactly. That's the thing here. That was not exactly a good move by the L. Yeah. There's, uh, there's the opportunity to reposition here with just a couple of blocks in the right places. Um, there's also an opportunity to chain push and then mm -hmm. block with the thrower. Yeah. You can't block with the thrower here, you need to... No, I mean, if it chain push the guy in front of the thrower away, the thrower could block the, uh, the only other guy basing them. But he has to blitz them. Yeah, yes. I think he, you really. Um, you were supposed to blitz to chain push. To yeah. block with he can actually block. chain push to clear this away if he pushes in the right directions here. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like he has, but that's a KO. So that is a downed elf. Um, no babes, as far as I'm aware. So we are seeing a little bit of elf blood coming out, but not not the, the not the permanent kind. That's another down. I think the elves are favored after this because yeah. uh, they sustain no damage, uh, and orcs bash. I mean, undeveloped orcs. They're not gonna win against elves. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now, I, now I understand what the problem is. I okay, I'm watching in the stream. That I was not the right in game. Push. I need to watch in yeah. game so I can see everything in real time. Mm -hmm. Okay. We should watch in game, not the stream. Yeah, because he says things that are 30 seconds in the future for us. Uh, oh man, I'm here with the audience, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm commenting on what the audience is seeing as well, so. <laughs> Yeah, but you see what um, we see, 30 seconds. I don't know, it's confusing. I'm, I'm thoroughly confused because I'm actually commenting on the stream. So I think I think we all <laughs> okay, have to so watch one client to be on the same page. Yeah. So the questions of the stream. client. I think we all need I'm to be sorry. watching the stream to be on the same page. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that of watching the stream. Anyways, uh, right now you can just start moving your cage to the right and just leave all these elf team members behind. There's a lot of hits going in here. What time is it for you, um, it uh, is... Ga Gustos? Uh, what time is it? It is quarter to eight. I mean in-game. Oh, in-game. Um, it is just turn six for the elves now. I'm looking uh, at the stream. I mean, time one forty-seven, one forty. No, it's three fifty. Three fifty. Yeah. Not that far off then. Yeah, it's three fifty here. Um, turn six for the flying whales. I think you should watch the stream if everyone's watching yeah. the stream. Everyone should watch the stream, and we should be fine. You heard that, guys? Watch the stream. I don't oh, know why the ball didn't move. The light was seeing the ball move. Watch the stream. Oh. <laughs> Don't cross the streams! 
<laughs> okay. Don't. Yeah. Okay. Quickly, post it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> teething problems. Um, so, there was some sort of weird twitch, oh, yeah. gl- a twitch glitch that, that kind okay. of threw things off a bit yeah. there. So that's Sorry, guys. Was. Sorry for the really confusing commentary, everyone. That's all right. Yeah, see, um, it yeah, should see, be. This, this is what I was saying right now because the orc, the orc cannot just move in the the thrower now because mm-hmm. he wasted too much time on his half, so he yeah. has to hand off or he won't score. Okay, blitz in the blitz. I feel like even if you threat. could have. You probably want to hand it off to all. You don't want the SVP on the thrower. Mm. Yes, you do. But you, technically, you... right now, he still has um, enough movement. Wait. Uh, no, yeah, he, he still has enough movement with the flow world to score. But he needs to make two GFIs. Yeah. Yeah, but he, the elf isn't going to let him just go, make the maximum movement. He has to, you know, if he'd be faster, he could have a cage up in there now or at the side yeah this is looking this is looking very much like a nil nil to me but um i think what i would do is perhaps hand off to the blitzer to the top right um and then try and screen off the elves as much as possible and just go potato um blitz through with that blitzer on the elf directly up above him use the extra momentum of that to avoid having to take a gfi at the end of that um, and then just try and screen off those elves as much as possible with your free players so that if they do want to go and hit that blitzer they have to make dodges um and it'll be more difficult to get a two gfi so that's the only real way that i can see of scoring at this point um but given the amount of elves who've kind of chucked themselves to the sidelines that is more easy than it otherwise would be. Um, I think currently he still because the elves are based. Like mm-hmm. if these elves stay based, he can ease. I think he can easily um, cage up and like hand off to a floral, uh, a blitzer. I, I should say. Yeah. Uh, further up. Yeah. These these elves are now trying to withdraw. I think. Yes. That's... So. Correct. What That's we're hoping for is failed dodges. Or we are if we are supporting the orcs in this case. Yeah, hopefully the dodges fail. <laughs> we all like to see elves fall over. Exactly. Even other elf coaches. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is a clear path through for a blitzer here with minimal effort. Um I mean, he's still not covering that whole left quadrant of the pitch there, so um, it's still perfectly doable if any of these dodges don't go off. The earth messed up here. He opened up that side completely now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's game... a big mistake. You're just giving them a chance to score. Yeah. But the whole game, the orcs... He still has three up. elves to move with. Yeah, and elves being agi4 means that they've just dodged through that like it's not even a thing. But there is okay, still yeah, that... Co- that channel up the sideline. I think yeah. this is fine. Uh, this is it's exactly totally. what we're going to do. No, no. I think this, the, the, I think this gives the orcs uh, a perfectly good opportunity here. He blitzes the the closest uh, leftmost elf and then uh, he's in good shape, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, hands off sure, he has that though, option still, but it's definitely far worse than when you had it before, like yeah. with this open. The thing is, uh, oh, oh, he just ended his turn. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay, because he, he could have still moved the flow wheel up to the left to make it, so he had to bits in. But um, the trick here is that the orcs are going to have to cage up on the sidelines. Yes. And um, if you're elves, it's much easier to. Uh, yeah, leaving cool. leaving the thrower there effectively puts the thrower out of the equation, um, and, and he can get was served. a mistake. Um, he could get served. Um, yeah, but surfing is a bait. Yeah, surfing is a bait here. I I wouldn't surf here unless it's the last thing you're going to be doing this turn, and even then, there's better things to be doing with it. Um, you you would be better off just blitzing that left hand column and trying to push up on the side. Is the thrower is a is a is an elf scoring threat? Yeah. yeah. That's that's one thing. But uh... Uh, 
if he was a school threat, I would have liked him to dodge out anyway. Yeah, exactly. You might as well have taken the dodge that turn, and then you have two turns even if he fails the dodge to get further down the pitch. Whereas if he fails the dodge now, um, that's a much more difficult prospect. So yeah, I think we are seeing the attempt at the side cage here. I don't think that was correct. Always risky with the side cage. Mm -hmm. Base the air there, just dodge in. Yeah, I think we may see the, the the basing coming in. He may be thinking to hand off to that blitzer to try for the score, or throwing a pass to that blitzer to try for the score. So he may try and screen with the rest. Um, I would like to see this black hawk next to the block lineman run up and base the two linemen on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I think you may have uh, hit the nail on the head with the surf here. Yeah, the sur I think the surf's worth it. Uh, I don't think, I think the surf on the thrower good. is worth it. Because the thing is, if he blitzes the um, what's it called, the column. Mm -hmm. What does oh, that no, actually I would have moved give that him? Thrower a little bit? Yeah, I would too. I think he's going to go for a pass here. Oh. I don't like the throw there either. No, this is this is bad because if he only has one orc in scoring range, the elf just has to blitz that orc, and if he's yeah. knocked over, that's no, you can't score. Yeah, and the elf definitely has the pieces to blitz that. It's definitely yeah. not smart. I would have put the or that thrower way more up ahead, maybe around here. Yeah. Next to the blitz. I think he's going to go for the blitz with the black hawk on the thrower. And you should that's have unfortunate. There. No, 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 no. Yeah, that blitz should have gone in on the column. I mean, if you get the injury on the on the catcher, it's worth a uh, shame. Yeah. Guys, you don't have to blitz the column, but you should move up with your yes. players. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, the only orc scoring threat is the blitzer. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we'll, all he has to do is blitz the blitzer, and unfortunately that will be it for the half, um, which is a shame. If he uh, if he just moved someone in to support rather than taking the bait, then um, he may well have dealt with that a little better, um, and maybe have been in with a chance. I think we're going to see the blitz on that blitzer. If that blitz succeeds and there's a reroll for it, then that's probably a nil nil half. <laughs> The one, saving really grace, nice the, the one saving grace is that the elves do have to bomb a player straight down the pitch first thing in order to have a scoring threat. And if they don't do that, then there's a possibility this could go horribly wrong. Yeah, but, yeah, don't care. yeah, but if the orcs see I that don't they think can't the elf score... Team really cares about trying to... <laughs> <Yeah. the scoring. laughs> I agree. I mean, you put them in a really good position because then you just have to score again next half and mm -hmm. that's a duo. But... You still don't need. Yeah. Okay. I don't and think push one, I two, think three, this, four, five, this six, newbie seven. coach could uh, do it. Two, two turn score. I don't think he could uh, two turn score even then. True. I don't think um, he score. Yeah, and I, I, I think were I the elf coach there, I would maybe have re-rolled that blitz, um, just hoping for the power, because if you get the power, that's it completely academic. You are definitely going in nil-nil. There is still an outside possibility that you could do something here. Um, seems highly unlikely, but um, yeah, it's eh, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a nil-nil half. If he wanted to re-roll something, he he should have went uh, or made some plays to try to secure the ball next turn to then pass it to the. Yeah. If you if you're still if you're still dodging the thrower away or the thrower got removed, did it? Uh, oh, throw got removed. Throw got served. <laughs> didn't need to get the assist there. Oh, that was brutal. That was a dead. Nice. Oh yeah, no, that's. That's what we're saying. Like keep facing. If you keep basing, eventually armor will break. That's yeah. just how it works. Um, he's injured rather than dead. And he's still missing. That sucks. Yeah, that does suck. This is why I hate my swordless. <laughs> 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 this is what happens to my swordless like every game. Ugh. Yeah. That remind me of my first game of the league of this season. I actually managed to get a dead into dead Saurus oh, with a peasant. That was. Uh, I I don't mistake. like I don't like this. The elf coach 
what he should do is pressure that he can school back because now the old coach should like remove now, that free flare down the down the field because back exactly. there uh, the orc isn't gonna score anyway so it's useless. no 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 he might he might score it's very unlikely but if you know that your opponent physically can't score you can go for that play yeah I mean, the, the orc can't score here is the thing he can't unless I mean, if he dodges five plus into four plus, yeah, it's a maybe uh, it's a two percent play, but if you want to win the game, you know, the two percent play is okay because the elves can't score back like that. And now. it's a two percent play with a reroll. Hmm. Yeah, but two percent play uh, with a reroll is how much percent? Three, four. <laughs> it depends. It depends. It, it depends. But the thing is, he can go for that play because the. Opposing team can't score back, like yes. so. The elves can't score like now, um, yeah. which is the reason why you can go for that play. Because if he goes for that play and the elves can score, if he fails, then the elves have a good chance of just scoring. Yeah. That's why he has multiple players, you know, to base the the scoring threat. Like if he put, if he put that elf down there, he could have had two blitzers or a lineman and a blitzer uh, yeah. basing the elf. I mean, he could still go for the two percent play. It's not. It's not like he couldn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing we're seeing a, a series of elves getting punched out. It's good that he is uh, blocking the elves first mm -hmm. before he does anything risky here. And I don't and even two percent play. It's like a ten percent play right now. Yeah, and I think that the way that you would attempt to do it is you would attempt to blitz the uh, blitzer on the left free by blitzing into the elf, basing him to the top and right, and then using the momentum of that to push through on top, and then running into the end zone for the dodge, um, and then passing. I think that's the only way you really can could you, realistically um, do it. Can you show us how far the blitzer can move, the one that can score? Yeah. So he is a GFI away from the end zone, so he wouldn't need the GFI if, I uh, see now, he's not taken that, unfortunately. I think he's decided that he's just going to try and do the elves over as much as possible. Mm. But, can you um, surf here? Can you check the movement of the, yeah, that, ble that blitzer? No, he, could, he didn't go for it. No. Why is he caging? Wait, has he, he not seen the, the timer? elves to steal the ball? But the elves can't score. So. The elves can't score, so that seems kind of futile. But yeah, it's a little unfortunate. I would like to see a foul on the. Is it a block lineman or a blitzer? Whatever it is, it's worth it to I mean, foul. Yeah, if he wanted to go for the. If he wanted to go for the foul, he needed to move the blitzer. He just moved up there as a cage, to assist. I think that would yeah. be a better play. Oh, there we go. There's the foul. Goes I in. think it's still a pretty good foul. Yeah, a pretty good foul. And um, unfortunately, Sadly, it doesn't pay off. Doesn't pay off. It's four plus three. Mm -hmm. No, that that's, he couldn't do it. But then again, he could have moved the carrier into assist yeah. as well, and that would break the armor. Yeah. And then seven on the injury. Oh, yeah, that's also what? true. Bombzard. He um, may have missed the turn. Pass. Mm. He could have passed. For the SP. Yeah, he may have missed that it was turn eight. Um, I, like I said, I, what I would have liked to have seen him do was to um, take the very risky play, but because there was no scoring threat for the elves, um, send the ball up to the blitzer, try and blitz through, then dodge off. Um, had a reroll for it. He's taken two rerolls into the halve, so um, it would have been worth a try because he could, in theory, have, with a couple of dodges, made it to the end zone. Um, it's searching, though. It's you pretty hard to here. think about those things, mm. and also the elf coach, his mistake was not having a scoring threat here. Yeah, as well. Um, if you're no, the elves, no, no. you don't because you have the opportunity here to potentially do some nasty stuff. Um, you can surf. You can surf. Not even. You... That, yeah, that's true. Um, I think he can even surf two players here. Mm -hmm. uh, he... Oh, I I think moving. The, I think I that think that guy... stops it really. But um, oh, I don't no, think he, he can surf anymore. No. And he fucked up. I mean, he could have he could have surfed the blitzer and then still go for the black orb. Yeah. Well, what he could have done was he could have you see where the lineman went to assist. He could have blitzed from that way yeah. and surfed the blitzer and then the line orc can the black orc. Can play. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm going to mute my mic now so I can just communicate with my okay. NT a little bit. Yep, half time. And uh, Bombzad, yeah, you want to make do as much damage as you can as high elves at at this stage, because you you know you're blocking armor nine, which doesn't always play. But as we saw, he got a kill on an armor nine guy, so we need to try to go for it. Yeah, now the elves are uh, kind of a lead, I feel, because like even though they're like two players behind, if nobody wakes up, Ooh. yeah, they stay down. Um, oh, that's nasty. <laughs> they, I think that's still very easy for them to score, and yes. very early. They don't have a catcher, but they still have Agility 4. Yeah, I don't think the elves need, necessarily need a catcher to like score like that. It does help them a lot, but they can still use the... without the catcher, maybe... A Basically, place. with movement 8, what that means is you only have to be 3 squares into the opponent's... Uh, uh, side to score um, with uh, with two GFIs, so it's not uh, so obviously you want to be five squares into the opponent's uh, side Does of the pitch. Orc or coach know how to set up? I think he's talking to his mentor right now about how to set up. Ah, um, and I would assume that the Orc coach is going to either rule of five. Or the chevron to stop the early score, of the elves. I think you got a chevron because if if the I don't I don't think the elf coach is that experienced, but uh, if you're the elf, you you got a quick score here. I think. Uh, the later you score, the less of a chance the orcs have of scoring back, because it's well, it's one zero, it's zero zero right now. So if the elves score on turn eight, the orcs are just going to lose because they well, can't that... one turn. Well, that's true. The elves have three chaos, so if if they score quicker, they get those players back, which makes defense against the orcs easier. And even that's then, true. the orcs. I feel like I don't think uh, having I don't... less time for the orcs to score is still better than having your three pieces back for that. I mean, considering... well, yeah, you have to remember the chaos. It's fifty fifty percent chance they come back. Uh... Considering the orc orc players' experience. I don't think I don't think he knows how to two turn score or three turn score, you know, because he he was too slow uh, on the on the coming back. Also, plan. also Chevron's here because he doesn't have uh, one player. He needs eleven players to Chevron. It's also worse. So Lulu five, I think, is the correct play here because the Chevron is just weak. You guys see on the light side right now. Yeah, but he can just he can just uh, modify it, right? He uh, he he can still put the players back on the on the side and then change the middle, right? It's not like the chevrons are now impossible to do because he doesn't have one player left. No, I he mean chevron is physically. I I'm fairly sure it is actually impossible to do with only ten players because you need I mean, eight. You need eight players in the back because you need the column. It's not impossible. You can do it. It's just that it's gonna be a weaker chevron. Uh, this setup is not something I go with because it leaves one side uh, weaker than the other. Mm -hmm. But you can do uh, symmetric chevrons with this amount of players. Right. You can actually do it. I've done it. You just put the guys in the middle and then put still put the, uh, a pairing of two or not a pairing because you can't put the four players on each side. You can put two players uh, oh, on the I outside. See. So you, okay, so just to... Uh... So you guys put three players in the middle and two players on the sides. Right, if you're missing players. If okay. you have the full team, then you put like the normal chevrons, right? Yes. Okay, then I understand what you guys mean. Now he's doing a little of five. So I don't what? like how he put the linemen behind. I think you need to put a lineman on the line. Instead of uh, one extra black orc, Bombzard, um, it uh, it's not that far back because the elves have movement seven, so and orcs are a little bit slow. So you want to be able to be in front of the two turn to stop them from dodging through. Okay, I'm back. And they have Hello. movement seven. I think you, I think you should set up the. Oh, 
he didn't finish the rule of three anyway. But in in uh, if the players are uh, movement seven, I think you should set up one one square back, so you deny deny the blitz without a GFI. Yeah, and uh, I see your point there. Um, I did try to get him to set them um, up a square back, but unfortunately, he ran out of time. Um, he didn't. Uh, he didn't finish the the yeah, rule of five. Yeah, the, the the clock ran down unfortunately, but um, I I think we're still okay. It just kind of picks yeah. which side. Um, fortunately, that's the side, and fortunately, that is the side that has more black orcs on. So you can use those essentially as beef gates to try and funnel the elves. Um, so I, I'm not I'm not too concerned with this. We will see how the elf plays it. Um, he may well try and run players in behind, um, which seems the seems the possible opportunity. And in theory, they could one turn. This is true, but um, we'll see what happens. Um, oh yeah, you don't want to one turn. No. Why would you if you one turn, you're immediately turn? giving the ball back to the orcs, and the orcs have a yes. numbers advantage. There's a possibility that neither of those KO players come back. It's 50 50 on each of them. So, one turning here would be a horrible mistake. Um, I'm not sure that the elf coach has even really tried one turns, so it's probably academic. Also, because... like, one turns are just really unlikely to work. Yeah. Uh, and the two turn is just a lot safer than yeah. in general. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll see what happens here. Um, I think we. Yeah, we were we were talking about the setup. I think I think he should have done chevrons here uh, instead of the uh, rule of five. I disagree. Oh, but, that's uh, unfortunate. <laughs> that's really unfortunate. That's how it is in Blood Bowl. Yeah, yeah. classic Vox. Mhm. Mm classic Nuffle. On a black orc too. Well, at least, at least, it's, at least just it's just a stun. Yeah, one and it's in not in the reinforced side, so... Chevrons mm -hmm. versus Rule of Five. I think it's Rule of Five, definitely, yeah. Right. Yeah, I... I, mean, I no, chevrons, not Rule of Five. I, I, I see the argument with Chevrons, but the Chevrons puts a hold in your line, unfortunately. Um, the hold no, I mean, has now appeared. <laughs> I mean, you don't... It, it doesn't put the line in your in your setup if you set up differently. You know, you put the three players in the midsome. Yeah, I, I think I think part of the problem with a um, chevrons when your player's down is when your orcs are very slow, so it's very difficult to come back and cover, especially against high agility teams. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I, if he chevrons with maybe a, the black orcs on the the sides, they have movement four. So yeah. whichever side the elves push up, the black orcs are going to take two turns to move in onto yeah. that side of the. Pitch. So I, I think the rule of five here is more of a reactive setup. Um, if this was uh, a case where um, Amarello had scored on uh, the opposing drive in the first half, then I would say chevrons, because you are going at it from a position of being ahead. But yeah, this is um, another stun on a black orc is is unfortunate. Um, nice. So With the way the high elf coach is playing here, it seems like he wants to stall. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's going to attempt to stall here. Because um, he's used four players to block. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, and I, I think I agree with stalling as well. Because yeah. um, you have a bunch of orc players stunned too. Yes. Yeah. And, oh, that's another armor break and that's an injury on a second blitzer. Yep, armor 9. Mm. It's fake. Armor 9 <laughs> is fake. And it's another MNG, unfortunately. Ooh. Yeah, that that really stings. Yeah, really, really. Yeah, stings. that's a really bad position to be for the orc. Yes, yeah. definitely. That's very unfortunate. Yeah. Two MNGs uh, on blitzes is really, really harsh. Um, I guess we'll see how he copes with it. I think that brings the levels back almost to parity. Because um, now the orc, the high elf coach is thinking, oh, there's two orcs missing. Mm -hmm. uh, and my guys are KO'd, so then he might be thinking of scoring, so he might be yeah. able to sack it. Yeah. I mean, he, he should have scored regardless of whether or not those orcs were stunned, because you, you, you get the chaos back. I really think that you if you're the elf, you score quickly here, and then try to score or try to sack the ball on the orc drive uh, to make it 2-0, and then the orcs can't get back. 
Well, the safer option is the 1-0. Yeah, the safer option is always the 1-0. So um, maybe perhaps getting too spicy there, but we will see. Um, there's a, l a lot that could go wrong. I definitely understand the idea of getting the KOs back because, yeah. like, like, like we said, there's nine orcs on the pitch. That's mm -hmm. so much harder than eleven. But um, there's only a fifty-fifty that all of those KOs come back, so it's still yeah. kind of up in the air. But and also, if you're the elf coach, if you score, then the worst that can happen is probably a tie. Yes. And uh, the best that can happen is two zero. Yeah. Uh, so that might also be that might also factor into it. It might just also be the case if he just wants to score because he wants to score. You know, this is college, so um, he may not even be considering those possibilities. Yeah, uh, your mic cut out for a bit there. Oh, what sorry. You say? I said he might just be considering just scoring because he wants to score. So um, that's true. You really need a development on those blitzes. Yeah. Um. Uh, trying to push for the duo does seem like a very good uh, option for the elves right now. Yeah, I think he's in a position where, given the downed players that um, scoring early on this drive um, helps more than hurts him. Um, and if he delays too long, then he could end up losing more players, possibly to injuries, um, which brings the numbers back towards even. Yeah, I think the best turn to score for the high elves here would be on turn 12 or 13. Yeah. Because that still makes it so the orcs want to score, but they have to move fast to do yeah. that, uh, which puts pressure on them to make mistakes. Absolutely. Okay, moving up here. Yeah, what can you do as orcs here? It's really sad actually watching watching orcs play with only seven players because yeah. two are stuck, two are injured. Based with, uh, I don't like I the think the with best. Laser. Orcs can do right now is try to stop the touchdown, and if that doesn't succeed, they can at the very least try to go for the tie. So that's yeah. not too bad. Yeah. So we discussed this as well. So um, I told him that a nil-nil is better than a one-nil, and if he has to, to force the elf player to score early, so that he has a chance of pulling it back. So the best thing that the orcs can do here is try and stall it out by delaying them as much as possible. But if that doesn't look like it's going to work, which is a distinct possibility, to immediately just start smashing players to pieces in an attempt to force him to score early. Because um, if he can force him to score early, then he has a chance of tying it up. Um, if he can... Yeah. I will also say for this, for the orc coach, I think he, uh, when he, it was his offense, he I felt that he gave up a lot of blocks. Um, yeah. I, I felt that he missed a lot of... Uh, blocks where if they're pushers he could block again yeah um the other thing i think is that we would we identified immediately was that he um caged up way too far back um that's something that was kind of a blind spot in what we were talking about when we were going over the possibilities for this game beforehand so i'll hold my hands right. up on that one um i did tell him that the important thing is to secure the ball um however he didn't need to collapse that far back um he could have screened kept people up front because yeah. it would have been difficult for the elves to get round yeah. him, because and then usually, just move the thrower up afterwards. Exactly, because usually all you need is really one guy mm. on the ball, and uh, then then the thrower to pick it up. Yeah, is what I usually do when I'm uh, caging. Yeah, so I think uh, rather rather than um, out of necessity, rather than desire, he's using a black orc as a safety there. Um, which is a little unfortunate because that Black Hawk is kind of on a GFI to get to the right hand scoring threat, even if the right the right hand scoring threat doesn't move um, further down and out of range. Um, so yeah, I don't like that he put the Blitzer by, uh, there basing the Elf over a Black Orc mm. basing it. The Blitzer should have been the safety. I yeah, think. should have been should have been the other way around and kept the Blitzer as the safety. So yeah, this is um, this could well be the whales trying to get a score straight away, um, and um, I guess that kind of changes the complexion of the game as to what the elf coach does this turn. 
gives us some idea of what he's going for. Oh, moving that guy there over one square up means that if this is a push, the orc coach gets a punch on the elf. Mm -hmm. It's not a push, thing. About. No. So, not punished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not punished. But not particularly so rewarded he, either. No way on the if he took the power there, he could have followed and gotten an assist on yeah. the other line. Because now, now he uses that guy to base mm -hmm. the orc, but he could have just moved forward with bits of yeah. Also now the orc the orc is basing uh three elves. Yeah. He stands up. <laughs> Stun wow. on the lineman. Armor nine is really not holding yeah. up this. Stun on the lineman, but uh yeah this is um that was not optimal. It's like I was told armor seven is only gonna surprise and armor nine is only gonna disappoint. It's very true. <laughs> That's a very good way of looking at it. Yeah. Sorry, I will uh, jump into the client a bit so I can move things around because we're quite we're looking at quite wide a wide area. So I don't know if we'll see the ball move up behind this screen. The Gethy man also <laughs> made. <laughs> Are you talking about bombs then? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think yeah. the thrower yeah, should be is. moved up first. <laughs> yeah, the thrower should be moved up further. Uh, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's nothing scary. There's no one who. Yeah, yeah. There's no thing that can happen to the thrower right yeah. now. He's. Expensive. Yeah, for sure. Um, All he can do with the the orc coach can do is four plus dodge and two G fires to base the. Uh, Fluid. Yeah, uh, the the catcher aim was served, so so he is on the sideline. Uh, I don't think he was injured. No, he wasn't. He was just knocked out. But yeah, so oh, we've no. seen the dodgers go. Started with the catcher. I don't think he has catcher. Oh no, it was a thrower, wasn't it? Rather than the catcher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the the yeah, catcher was the injured. What's the main? He went for the flea little build instead of getting the catcher. Yeah. Wait, Correct. I think you can. Wait a minute. I think you can afford one catcher with flea little. He uh, might have just died. <laughs> it's quite possible. He might have. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely possible. Yeah. This is a. This has been a bit of a rough half for the orcs. Oh no no no! I, no, I think he went for the thrower instead of the catcher. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Yeah. Correct. Because uh, they both cost ninety, I think. So, yeah, we are currently looking at um, not much happening. <laughs> but, no. uh, I think that's pretty Elf, much. Elves the are just backing about. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could, in theory, dodge the elf off the Black Orc there, but I'm not really sure what that would accomplish apart from denying the hit. Um, well. Yeah. Which is, which is it, enough. It? <laughs> it's enough. I think it's worth it not to get a hit. Hmm. No high elf catcher is like bad dark elves, according to him. <laughs> yeah, it's true, actually. It actually is. <laughs> That's very true. Right? Oh, God. Because um, okay, so... the catcher also... I mean, bad dark elves is still dark elves. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> no, they're really not. They're just like a, a something. <laughs> I'm not even entirely sure what they yeah. count as. They're pretty terrible, actually. Yeah. Okay. Dark elves is all around. Well, they're the not path. threats. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate witch elves. I'm just going to take assassins instead. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's only really one way of using uh, assassins, and that's you um, try and get them to level one, and you hope to get a double so you can get multiple block. And if you don't, you fire them. Yeah. I um also like the whole point of playing high elves is are the catches actually you yeah. get four of them. Yeah. And you can build them into like war dancers, basically. Yes. Um, according to Boomzard, that one was injured, maybe, but maybe not. Um, you can take dodge and jump up on assassins, but um, eh. yeah. But 
I mean, why would you, why would you take an assassin? Teams in your league, if there's not enough Skaven teams in your league, you just don't take the assassin. Yeah, why, is... why would you? Why would you take the assassin over a witch elf any day? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know? The problem, the and problem you never take assassins. it when you're starting out the the team mm. as well. That will be very fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah, the issue with assassins is that they're movement six and armor value seven, so yeah. you, you need to level them up. <laughs> yeah, and they're armor seven, so. and they have shadowing, which means no, no, no. You're confusing speed. assassins with runners, also, man. What? No runners. <laughs> yeah, it's runners that it's runners that Ali hates. What? What? Awesome, I mean, Chad, he's saying that you get assassins to get Ellie angry. No, you get runners to get Ellie angry. <laughs> okay. Ellie, Ellie appreciates the death of a of a bad runner, I suppose, because there aren't really. Well, good. about I, I Roger, don't... Roger isn't a bad piece. It's controversial, <laughs> maybe, but uh, I would not a... take a Roger. <laughs> it's not a bad piece, but it's a good piece on uh, the wrong team. It's mm. not Look, it's a just... bad piece. It's a horrible piece. <laughs> Look, it's just some Skaven coaches take Roger, some Skaven uh, coaches don't take Roger. It's like yeah. it's not it's not as bad as Assassin. <laughs> or Norse thrower. The good Skaven co coaches don't take talk. <laughs> um, um, that's my opinion anyway. Yeah. Don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but just to prove that it's not a bad piece, it's just on the wrong team. Imagine Brett with Rogue. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, see you later, Ryan. Thanks for dropping by. Um, yeah, see you, Ryan. Bye, okay, so like not going insane. <laughs> so we've now switched the safety out for a blitzer. Although that's good. This, yeah, there's still um, a couple of obvious scoring threats here, um, just with dodges. But I guess you kind of pray that you snake a dodge. I think I think you shouldn't have the safety here. I think yeah, I agree. I think the safety should probably have been double marking the um, scoring threat on the right hand side. Um, yep. Top and tail, um, but yeah, I guess we'll just see how it works. I mean, this, this is what the safety is for, right? Mm. He's just there, stand doing nothing. Yeah, this I, isn't a. I suppose the, the thinking here is it's a last man blitz, but the last man blitz is pretty irrelevant if the pass goes in and the something, elf just dodges Something out. that the high elf coach might not have noticed, or the orc, is that it's really sunny right yes. now, as well. Yeah. Did, uh, did no, did not oh, play it's really tail. sunny, right? Yeah, so uh, minus one on all the pass. The pass is rolls. risky. Mm -hmm. Or as risky as oh, a pass you do rolls. need the catcher right now. <laughs> yeah, he can hand off to the movement seven blitzer and mm -hmm. maybe make a pass or, or a shorter uh, pass. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a chain through if he wants to score this time. Damn. Yeah, it's actually good, but it's, it's still going to be a little bit risky even with the reroll. Um, and who knows, we could see something come of that. Stalling as elves is one of the very advanced strategies, uh, I would say. One of the hardest things to do as an elf coach, I think, because you need to somehow stall without losing half your team. Yeah. Um, fortunately, because of the lack of mighty blow on the opposition here, it's not as difficult. No. Oh. Or he, he he got paid off, but yeah, that was a risky was... thing to do. But now the that site is is open. If he if he uh, marks the the downed orcs, if he moves two two squares, mm -hmm. no three yeah, three is a bit like, much. Looks like he's going to be in here. I mean the the blork can't do shit, but I still I still uh, have both both of them marked. Yes, and the the. The uh, the elf uh, marking the blork uh, can be uh, can be kind of caging the the, the uh, thrower. Yes. So I don't think we're going to see an attempt at a score this turn. Um, so I go against orcs this next week, and watching this game has made me realize what I can do to beat them. <laughs> just get lucky and eat your tree of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Just, just have uh, rocks being as as is always as is always the case. Just roll sixes and pows, and you'll be fine. <laughs> just roll sixes. It's that easy. <laughs> just roll ten. 
armor dice. Roll ten on its own armor dices. Yeah, and you are fine. Um, and yeah, you, and the do uh, dirty player lineman. I'm wondering if the elf is deciding. No, no, I need to induce a blocker. I lost. I got an NMG one. Ah, what are you? What team? Uh, what team do you play, Leadpipe? Oh, uh, I'm playing Bretts. Uh, uh, so you're a so Bretts yeah. player. I need the wrestle, basically. Yeah. I think I have enough gold to induce it with a guard, though. Is it worth it over uh, over a wizard? I'm not sure what that, that what? block at the end there accomplished, really. It just... I think it is, because it's orcs. I mean, they're not going to be able to, like... I don't think you should go have done too that. far up behind. I think you I should have. Uh, if he blocked the kept thrower, the thrower. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah you should have hit the thrower. And he doesn't have block. It just seemed like an odd thing to do. Yeah. And also, if this is push, which it was, he's one step closer. To yeah. Um, so you've got a two die on the scoring threat on the right hand side. You've got um, the ability to bring that blitzer in on the scoring threats on the left hand side. Yes. You can use the black orc to tag up the blitzer that's just moved down through the middle and is now based with the lineman. So where where do you go from here? Like that, that kind of made things more complex for himself for, for no reason. Yeah, I think the orcs have a really easy. Uh... They can consolidate the position quite Currently, easily. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. He, he, that that's exactly what I would have done. So um, that's good. That's very good. Perfect. Sorry, I was back I would on the like climb for a second there. I would also like to see the thrower move. Uh, yeah, the thrower should uh, step in for an assist. Horizontally with the lineman. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. And then that guy assists. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would have had him one square to the right. I would too. Because um, now he's not giving himself an assist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try to dodge oh. out. That's a, that's an interesting. Oh, he move. was kind of tight. It's the ball carrier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's got a hit on it. Oh, oh damn! Uh, Fails the GFI. Oh, oh that shame. was unfortunate. That was really. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't have enough I don't movement. That, that was makes base sense. It. Yeah, just trying to base it. No. No, I mean, no, he what, was what did he blitz blitz it? then? No, he, he didn't have enough it. movement. Oh, he, he did. did. He had yeah. a GFI. Yeah, he had a GFI, so he GFI'd into it. But because of the GFI. dodged, dodged um, the dodge fail, then he didn't have a good roll for it. Couldn't he just blitz him with uh, with the lineman? He could. Uh, he could take the blork uh, block there, mm -hmm. or did he move the blork uh, there now? But that's without block. Yeah, the but blitz. it's still to die. Or oh, you mean lineman? Guy. It's a one but die. That's one. That's one GFI less. You, and it's a two die. If you oh, if no, you no, 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 actually no. The lineman was on the ground. He stood up. Yes. Ah. Correct. And the black orc also mm. uh, had to stand up. He stood. Yeah, I think I would have liked to have seen the block go in on the scoring threat on the right hand side first because it's. I a think two that's guy. actually okay. But that's what okay. he's doing now is he's really pressuring the high elves. To, yeah. Um, to score, which is yeah. what he wants. That doesn't do anything because the orc is on the floor now. It does. No, it does a lot of things because the, the orc isn't stunned. So next turn, the orc can hit the thrower. It makes and it so that passing to that wing is not as good anymore because now there's the threat of the uh, bl um, of that blitzer just getting up and marking your thrower. And pretty much every other elf player on the pitch is currently based. So um, it's going to involve dodges to get any of them free in order to really do anything. Um, so it, this could be just a psychological thing. And let's be fair, that only failed because he failed a GFI. So, mm. so had the GFI had it been anything but the one in six, then that would have been a hit on the ball with block against no block. So which they, is basically another GFI. I apologize for the crash. I think someone just dropped something downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but this is this is actually a really good position for. Mm -hmm. um, he's forcing GFI, and he's just rolled a skull. Oh man, oof! Yeah, that's that's that's, that's the re -roll that gone. Block. Yeah. KO on the thrower, but that is the reroll gone for this turn. Yeah, but the first, uh, the elf did the first hit uh, with uh, with a blockless block. Yeah. Is yes. there no block hit? 
There was. But there was, but I think he was saving the block hit to hit the blitzer. He might want to have that guy score. He yeah. wanted. Uh, he, he might be blitzing with the blitzer yes, now. Yes, quite possibly, and then throwing the catch and scoring. Oh, true. Yeah, if he can get that free with a blitz, he can just score and not worry about the blitzer. And chances are he is going to get that free because all he needs is a push and then just a step. Do they? Mm. Now here's a question: Is it worth it to two plus dodge to get That's unlucky for him. No. That was very unlucky for him. That was a bounce, bounce. So it might be worth. Now he has to deal with the uh, litter. Or dodge without a uh, reroll on the other side, and then throw a pass through via that. But um, we will see. So yeah, this is this. The removal on the thrower was good. What's happened since? Not so good. Can he still move into the end zone without a GFI? So it's just a plus with the uh, blitzer that just blitzed. He would have to dodge back out and round to do that, otherwise he's moving through multiple tackle zones. Um, what we got? We got movement seven. So one, two, th one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, he'd have to take one GFI to do it. Um, because if he were to go Actually, the other one way, does dodge one you can score because when you blitz, you use up one of your movement as well. Mm. Yeah, but he moves well, no, he through can't the. Score, sorry. He can't. He moves through the. He moves through the square. He could try and cut the corner, but that's a dodge into a tackle zone. So without a reroll, that may be considered too risky. That's not a good attempt. I mean, Ooh, I feel like yeah. that's not a good thing to try. Yeah. Wait, what's yeah, you... now? Oh, oh, he ran, started running out of time, and he's just run his thrower forward. You can move on to the ball. You can blitz the ball. Very easily, actually, Very with easily. an assist and everything. Yeah. All you do is you hit with uh, anti to knock out uh, Joe the blitzer. You've got a lineman free here who can blitz the ball. Um, and if you really want to risk it, you can take the GFI to assist with the blitzer, or even take the two GFIs to hit with the with the blitzer, having based with the lineman. I think it's better to block with the Black Orc to get mm -hmm. the lineman free. Yeah, I would do that first. Yeah. Yeah, just to have somebody facing the ball. Yeah. This is still kind of risky for the Orcs to get the sack, but mm -hmm. it should be possible. I'd argue the Elves stand more to lose, because if they lose the ball okay. right now, they're in real trouble. Yeah, very much so. It's not. That's the POW on the blocker, so that's a good start. That lineman is now free. I think you take the risk, you base with the lineman, and then you take the risk on the two GFIs with the blitzer. You blitz him, blitz him from the left hand side and push him in towards the Black Orc. That looks like what he's going to try and do. Yep. Hopefully he's seen it. No, he hasn't. He's blitzing straight on, which is unfortunate, but he gets... He hit. gets it. He gets the hit. That is the ball sacked. Um, scatter is... No a... recovery, sadly. Yeah. Now he just blocks him, period. Yeah, just just blocks him. Yeah. Well, you need to make sure that the block that you're making doesn't yeah, but free two, up elves. Two elves, elves. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the left side are free. Basically, one can uh, one can block the blitzer, move him from the other guy, and then the other guy can do his thing. True, true. We'll see if that happens. But that was uh, that was a much better turn for the orcs. Yeah, the scatter was a little unfortunate. If it had scattered the other way, then it would have been funnily really enough difficult to recover. It actually isn't that hard for the elves to score. Still, mm -hmm. um, you can two plus dodge with the blitzer move him into the end zone, 2 plus dodge with the flow wheel, 3 plus pick up, 2 plus dodge again and pass. Yes. Oh. I mean, here's the thing, uh, Boomzart, I don't think I don't think it's close to being 1-0 uh, uh, one, uh, for the orcs yet. No, I don't either. Because uh, Hiles are still an arch team. Even though they're better than pro elves, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, so they can they can score with uh, a few players. Correct. I think you have to take the half die with the blitzer here against the lineman. 
I think, so that I think I would be very tempted to make it. it harder for him. Yeah, mm, I don't think so because if that fails, then you flee two elves up. Um, mm, yeah, what about right. what about dodging out with the lineman on the right hand side and basing the ball up from the bottom corner? I yeah, that's a good idea. That's what I would do. Yeah, because if that succeeds, then you make and he's seen it. Up. Nice. Yeah, you make the pick up oh. just so much harder. Yeah. Oh, he could actually Says foul. He could foul there. I. Oh, he's actually oh, gone for the pick up. pick up. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't um, think I, I, no. I would have gone for that. But it's scattered back into the middle of the earth. Oh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. Beautiful scatter. That's, that's almost game, actually. Yeah, yeah I, I understand why he did that. I would have also tried to the pick up. I wouldn't have re-rolled it, but I would have tried it. Yeah. I, I would not I, have gone for the pick up. <laughs> I think I would have just based. I actually like this play though because of that scatter. If that scatter had gone horribly wrong, it would have been the worst idea ever. If you fell over on top of the ball, it's really easy for the scatter just to be like free pick up for the yeah. else. Well, admittedly, he sneaked it. But yes. Still it was not but I guess the way that he saw it was that in all, ch in all likelihood, if the ball was still there, then the else had a really good chance of scoring and he was going to lose anyway. So he's kind of gone for something much more risky and it's paid off. I think given the way that his luck has been a little bit this half then that's kind of fair. I mean, that's not how you should think. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't think that your luck's going to turn just oh, for sure. out of the yeah. blue. It's it's not the best idea, but um, um, I, I I think that this puts him in a much better position. And we just get well, personally, it, so. when I get like that, it's not like, well, I bet my luck's going to get better here. No, I'm thinking, well, I need my luck to get better here. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's kind of so. Good. If it fucks up, it doesn't matter. I'm still mm. losing. Yeah, but if that line orc would have just stood um, under the floor, uh, it would have been like a, a four plus pickup for the elves. Yeah. And then Talk about luck, my opponent in the last game, uh, he uh, twice he two red dice powered me without block. Oh God. <laughs> Did you watch uh, Bombzard's game versus Skaven? He did like, the opponent did like did five not. half die blocks that were all knockdowns on Tomb Cut. <laughs> <laughs> I would really yeah. hope that uh, going forward from this turn, uh, Amarello just takes steps to consolidate the ball rather than trying to pick it up because a nil nil would be better than a one one here. Um, if he can flood that and then if he can beat up the elves, I guess, then he goes for a pickup. But there we go, that's a skull. And that's A both down. Yeah, he wanted the scatter on the yeah. there. Didn't get it. Okay. So, this is where it gets to squeaky bum time, as uh, football fans would call it. First things first, you stand that lineman up and the black hook up. Still, the elves have cleverly made it difficult for the orcs mm -hmm. to get a two die here. Yes. Is it difficult? He can, ju he can just move the block around and serves as, a, as an assist. Like below. Yeah, but then you have one less guy on the ball. Yeah, you kind of need him on the ball. Um, I think I would be tempted yeah, to step the block up um, and then yeah, but you can just mm, you can just yeah, I... or or block every elf on the ball, and then cage it mm. or cage it cage the ball. I, I think. Oh, oh, last. That is rough. Okay. That's the last reroll. Yeah, that is the last reroll. So we are close to reroll this blood bowl now. Just the one left on the high elf team. And the thing is, if the elves score now, it's. Probably a win. If the score now, it's game over, yes. Yeah. But at least he can pick up on the thrower. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flow is gone, yeah. <laughs> so I think we're going to see a two die block come in on the. Hmm, yeah. Or the ball scatters to a block and he catches <laughs> Yeah. You don't want to scatter if you. No, you don't want to scatter. You just want to move in. You and don't just want to scatter it right ball. now. Yeah. Force the elf to dodge if he has to do anything. Um, I think you take the hit with block on the bottom left hand side, even though it's a one die, um, and you probably take the hit with the black orc on the bottom right as well, just to nix the scoring you, threats. I think you start with a uh, one in nine rather. I think you blitz first. And then you bring the, the black orc. 
Yeah, he hasn't actually used his blitz. So you could blitz with the black orc onto the um, is it the thrower? I mean, you blitz. Oh no, wait, the God, there's an elf there, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah there is. There's an elf there. Yeah, I can see him behind the bulk uh, of the black And if orc. he blitzes the blitzer, um, if it's pushed, the blitzer can just uh, push on um, orc to the ball too. Yeah. Which also Gets the hit. Yeah, and I should to the sideline. So yeah, I think we're probably where we should be. And okay, gets a hit nice. as well on the score threat. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. I'm going to let you guys talk for a second because I just need to go and use the facilities. So hopefully me leaving won't jinx it. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Okay, so let's talk. How is everyone's sex life? That's a bit inappropriate. On the, on the rebel. <laughs> I don't... Oh, come on. You haven't seen the room? No. It's a shit movie. Aww. Oh, hi, Mark. I. It is bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Thank you very much. So, anyways, Mark, how's your sex life? <laughs> You're my favorite customer. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> hi, doggy. <laughs> What's he doing there? He does. He's, he isn't doing shit. He's thinking about if he wants to blitz with this black orc or not. I mean, I don't see why he wouldn't. I it's, personally it's, it's the is only... the opposite for me. <laughs> Can we stop talking? I think about... you skip the yeah. You skip the blitz this turn. Because like, what are the elves gonna do? They need to. They need to one die push our orc onto the ball and hope that the orcs don't pick it up <laughs> with the scatter. Right now, for the elves, it's impossible to get a 2 plus on the pickup. If you move the plork, I think there's a possibility. I mean, I meant you blitz the, the block elf, not, not, the, not, the, not the thrower. Well, yes, I know, blitz, but like... If you blitz the block elf and it's a push, the block elf can just push somebody onto the ball. Okay, I'm back. So, um, did back. I miss anything? Um, Sex life talk. Biden, if he wanted to use his blitz on the blitzer, then he decided not to with the black one. Okay. Basically. Just blitz uh, another orc on the ball. Yeah, I guess you, you go for a scatter here and hope that it's favorable if you're the elves. Exactly. But, um, yeah. I'm not sure why he stood up with that. Mm. Oh. Mm. He's debating it. I think it makes this cutter a much harder thing to try to get. Yeah. I mean, at this point, you're basically looking at just chucking someone into the middle there and hoping that you get the dodge off. This is almost looking like a nil-nil. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and con considering that considering that we um, considering that we were looking at a fairly certain one nil a couple of turns ago, that's uh, that's quite an improvement in Amarello's fortunes. Yes, that scatter the scatter from the failed pickup was incredibly fortunate. Yeah, like I said, I I I hate scattering the ball because most of the time it just messes. Yeah, uh, up the position, uh, but sometimes. If you if it's if that's all you have, yeah, you need to go for it. Joe, I just read the chat. How dare you, boom, sir? That movie is a national treasure. <laughs> what movie is a national treasure? The room. the room. Oh yeah, yeah. The room is amazing. It's it's wonderful. It is what truly is... wonderful. Uh, um, I actually have a yeah. signed copy of the room by Tommy Wiseau downstairs. <laughs> oh, oh my dear god, life coach. I, the I jealousy. Feel like... I feel like the elf <laughs> is playing for the tie here. Yeah. Which... Yeah, we still have a blitz, so he could still blitz. Bye, Boomzard. Bye, Boomzard. Thank you for joining us. Uh, been a pleasure. Um, before you go, if you could just Bye, hit Boomzard. that follow button for me, that would be awesome because I'm getting relatively close to the affiliate program numbers, and it'd be nice to see what that's all about. So I'll follow you. Talking of well, weird. Thank you, guys. A little bit of self-promotion. Anyone who is watching today who feels the need, I would much appreciate that. Well, time to uh, time to move back, watching to decline then. 
<laughs> okay, it was a joke because I have a signed copy of the room downstairs. I wish it was mine, it's my housemate's, but <laughs> it's still downstairs, so <laughs> I'm claiming it. Alright, so we are now seeing some hits going on the elves to try and clear them off of the ball. I'm uh the orc, I think I think you should have uh sent a guy up. Mm-hmm sort of a, as, a, as a scoring threat but it's a bit late now yeah and I'm, I'm not really sure looking at the configuration of the players that there was really an obvious one to send up without taking some incredibly risky moves without any re-rolls um, I mean maybe if you take all the blocks on the ball here you tried to you would try to dodge okay. out the blitzer in the bottom left but like you said, there even okay Bonesar wasn't leaving he was just yeah. trolling he was just trolling about the about the two percentage play last half Right? Mm -hmm. It's like, even if there's no rerolls, it's a chance. Yeah. But there's no chance without a threat. Yeah. But I, I think I think part of it is that um, this is something that we talked about when we were going over it, and I said a nil-nil is a better result for you than a one-nil loss. So he may well just be playing it conservatively to try and to avoid losing rather than going for the win. Yeah, I quite like that blitz. That isolates out the... Elves and yeah. puts another body on the ball. If he blocks with the orc that's based by two players and gets a push. Gets a pow. Oh, he could even blitz with that guy. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that also works. Picking up the ball right now is actually not a uh, bad idea. Yeah, I mean, even if you just pick it up and just stay where you are. Oh, oh there you Skull go. Skull on the far right. Never mind. That's fine. That's unfortunate. That's fine. Right, it doesn't come on materially elves. affect come on the, elves, you can do it. Mi the the mix up on the ball there. So it's going to take some doing for um, Ezeth to get it this turn, at least. The elves have a scoring. The elves can absolutely scatter it right now. Yep. They certainly can. They've just got to push the blitzer into it and hope that it lands favorably for them. One guy on the on the lineman right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make it to that. So there is the prospect of an L scatter coming in here. Okay, let's um let's move the view ever so slightly so that we can see a little bit more of an overview of the area. So how would you play this then, gentlemen? What would you do if you were the elf coach to try and score? Because if he scores this turn, then that's it. That's the game over. If he scores next turn, that's it. That's the game over, obviously. But um... Yeah, I think I would move the lineman that's free in to so I can get a one die on the Black Orc. Mm -hmm. And then I also free up the other lineman. Uh, and like, so I scattered the ball. Uh, yeah, blocking the line orc, uh, black orc, I should say. Let's see if that's what he's going for. Yeah. Okay, see the scoring threat. Go. I mean, he could have left that guy there, I think. Yeah. And just thrown it to him. I guess that puts him out of range of the block without a GFI, though. Yeah, that's fair. You do need a good scatter here. Yeah. Oh, and doesn't go oh, for the scatter. Oh my... Oh, oh wow. no! Why would you not go for the scatter You didn't there? want to push that! <laughs> oh, that is a weird okay. decision. I think it's, uh, I think it's almost a certain uh, oh oh now. Mm. How, do How we... does he think he's going to win? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have <laughs> another <laughs> shot. How you have another win? shot. Scatter that ball, please. <laughs> Scatter that ball. <laughs> yeah, I think he has uh, two. No, he has still one on the. No, never mind. Okay. Gets the push. But, Pushes him but, away. But, 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 oh, <laughs> why did why? What is happening? Like, he must be just thinking it. that he can he clear just, it out. He just wants this to be a tie. He's yeah. It. He's happy with a tie, and I think he could just play for the win. Yeah. Because the. Oops. 
I don't know if they can physically score on, on turn 15. They I can't. think they can with a lineman, but that's about it. Now he goes with the push, which he should have gone two blocks Yeah. Ago. I think it's just trying to maximize the down. chances the of the scatter again to win this player. Even if it's favorable, it's not going to work for yeah. anything. I don't, think you don't follow. I don't think you follow here, yeah? Yeah, it's hey, landed. Yeah, landed that's on an, fairly on unlucky. Now you phase up. You wanted the scatter first. Yeah, this is this is going to be fairly easy to get a two die on. So. <laughs> wow. I think if this, I think if this two die goes off, then um, then that's it. Or at least the ball isn't. He still has a turn. Anymore. Mm. Uh, Boomzard, I mean, it's probably like a 40% play, to be honest, if the scatter goes anywhere where it's only based by one. Yeah. one. I, don't, I don't know why he did that. He should have based the the Blitzer and then 2 die the Blitzer. Yeah. So I guess we see how this gets played, but um, yeah, I could, it's I a could, one die on the ball like right now. It's a one die on the ball right now. I think you can quite easily make it a two die though. I don't think either of them can do uh, movement six one turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the orcs. I think how far can the line orc? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then he has another seven. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's... No, the Lion Orc actually can't score. Yeah, I think it's mathematically impossible for the Orcs to score 15 now. squares away from the end zone uh, of the... Lion elf. Orc has 5 movement. Yeah, yeah so 2 G5. So 7, he has 7 movement over 2 turns, 14. Mm -hmm. And he's 15 squares away. It's mathematically impossible for the Orc to score. Uh, uh, yeah, it actually is. Because <clears throat> there's so, no one within range, but yep, there so is... GG for the elves. They're playing to tie or win right now. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, viewers, you take sprint on your or climbing. <laughs> <laughs> for this exact map. <laughs> but I think... I think the sprint you, sure feed lineman. If you want to be really risky here, what you would do is you would blitz with the black orc at the bottom into the lineman who is next to the... I the... know oh, you don't even need to do that. Um... You can take a two die on that lineman who's um, next to the black orc and the line. You can use the lineman to hit the lineman. Um, you push him. Uh, if you push him, then it's much harder. But you follow, and then that gives you the um, blitz on the ball carrier, and then you hit with the black orc. But you've got to worry about the scatter there. So I'm, I'm not sure how you play this one really. There's a few possible options. Um, and yeah, this is kind of the elf's game to lose now. Oh, he does go for it. Gets it. You can actually push him off now. Yeah, that's what I would have done. So now yeah, you've got... because the orc's objective right now is just to stop the score. Yeah. So now you've got the hit with the black orc on the ball carrier. I think I would have liked to see the hit the block orc uh, to die if you move the lineman mm -hmm. to the next to the lineman there, so he could follow up and oh, just base that's his players. Interesting. You've got a lineman who can come back and cover that because he's now free. But um, in order to do that, yeah, that's about the best you can do there. And now you can take a hit on the blitzer and make him okay, have to roll yeah. dodges. Yeah, because if this is a push, then um, it's like a nil-nil, mm -hmm. but you never know, Nuffle might you smile. Move, move the camera down a little bit? Yes, so absolutely, we sorry. Again, so. Yeah, I totally will. There we go. Is that better? Yep, thank you. No worries. Yeah, so this is, this is in the lap of Nuffle now. I think I would take the two die on the blitzer with block even without block here because if you get a push it makes it much more difficult i yeah, think the element has to uh, hand off place yeah yeah and even if he uh, if it fails he still has one guy on the board 
mm -hmm. and to dodge in it's still like a screened off ball. yeah i think you may even be tempted to take the hit with the blitzer at the bottom on the line elf next to him first push him so that you're basing both of those but he gets the gets the power so got it and, um, and then you take the hit and base onto those two players there to make it even harder. Oh, yeah. Good hit. Good hit. Uh, Takes him out of the uh, equation. Man, there was so little elf blood this match. <laughs> there really like was. <laughs> Armalate OP. But I think the orc coach just didn't take enough blocks, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's really only one player here who can theoretically score and it's going to take a series of moves to do it so i think it's uh, uh you do have the, the player in the end zone who can come back up and support but even yeah then... that at the moment it's a 25 percent chance to pick up the ball yeah wait then it's uh just place the player there you know i think it, it was kind of worthless putting him there preemptively i mean the last this turn sure but yeah well, I mean, it was it was setting up for the future, but right mm -hmm. now his movement is. is no, wasted. I think his plan was schooling last turn. Yeah, I think that's what it was, and then it didn't go off because of the way that the scatter happened. So, um, it may even have been that he thought he would recover with the blitzer, not realizing that you can't pass once you've blitzed. I mean, if he wanted to go for the for the end last turn, he should have scattered sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I but he might do that. So yeah, this is just a case of just basically putting it in the lap of the gods, I guess. How would you make this better? Is there a blitz that makes this better? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Um, not one that you'd necessarily want to take, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't have the players to do the blitz in a way that will make it likely to succeed and then I recover and pass the ball as well. You might be able to stand up uh, with one guy, blitz with the blitz or the get up push. Mm -hmm. That's two GFIs. I think that's better than, and then push the one of the orcs off the ball. Yeah, which I reduces the amount of make it dodges better. you have to do, but um, yeah is still ex extremely risky. Let me check the odds right now. So it's um, 4 plus dodge, 4 plus pick up, then it's a 3 plus dodge, 2 plus dodge, then it's a 2 plus pass, 2 plus catch. Yeah, so it's, it's a 10% like play right now. It's a lot of dice. Uh, it's 10% play at the moment. And then if he does a, a GFI, into a two die blitz, which just pushes him away with a one die. That's one thing. And then it's a three plus dodge, three plus pick up, then two plus, uh, two plus dodge, two plus pass, and a two plus catch, which is a 17% chance. Yeah. So, really, the best play here would be blitzing with the blitzer onto the line orc mm -hmm. that's on the furthest away. Yeah. If that's a push, he can run in with the lineman that's free, pick up the ball with him, uh, dodge diagonally down, yeah. and uh, pass the ball. Yeah, that's and I think that's what he's doing right now. That's exactly oh, what he's doing no, now. Oh, no, he went for a... No, that, that's what I was yeah. going to do. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to do. Mm. And then you pick up with the lineman that's free, and you... Two, three plus dodge, three plus pick up. Ooh, why did he take the dodge out? And there we oh, go, yeah, the dodge fails. Weird. Yeah, I know that. Definitely. Here we dodge go, fails. here we go. GGs. Oh, unfortunately. Yeah, dodge fails. On the bright side, at least the Oros can now serve the, the guy in the end zone. Yeah. Yeah, they can. <laughs> well, that doesn't give you SPP, so... No, you might as well just he... take the hits. Yeah. Yeah, because that's basically you get, like... This is GGs. You take a couple of hits, yeah. then you do a vanity pass, and mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. You yes. don't really care about the elves because there's no yeah. no particularly scary piece, so... Yeah, so the yeah. elf... And play... again, armor break. Just a stun, though. That would have been some nice oh, SPP no on the Black Hawk. Yep. Just kill a fucking elf. 
<laughs> that sounds even funnier in your accent than pipe. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're going to see a Blackhawk Blitz here. I'm hoping that what he'll do is he'll try and recover with the down lineman and then pass. Yeah, good on the Elf Coach to realize that the Blitz the would make it a better play. Yes. Unfortunate that it didn't work. It was a 1 in 6 that he mm -hmm. scored there. It was uh, useless to dodge out if he wanted to end the game there. Yeah, I don't know why he did the dodge out with the Yeah, Blitz he added a one, another 1 in 6 failure. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and if the dodge had been the one that he'd made um, with the player who was free and that had been the roll, that would have been it. Would have well, the way dice work, they don't really care what no. you rolled before you okay, roll so next. Uh, goes to the pickup and fails it. Yeah. That's GG. fine. That's GG's. Brilliant. GG's GG's game over. Both coaches. I think the orc coach. What do you guys think? Well, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on um, some of the areas that I... Uh, apparently missed when we were going over things so uh, caging up too early surrendering the field there in the first half was a bad thing um, I actually think the second half he actually played very well considering how under it he was so the pressure there seemed to have done wonders um, I think the elf coach certainly helped in that respect because he did a lot of moves that I would consider to be somewhat inexplicable um, gets the MVP on, a throw on the thrower and there's MVP on the lineman there. We'll take a quick look at the statistics. But uh, I think this proves seven the armor legs for both teams. <laughs> yeah, this proves in the fact that offense is harder to do, and you can easily fuck up on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, both both the orcs and the elves fucked up on their offense. Orcs uh, caged up too uh, too far down, and yeah. the um, elves didn't do pushes. Yeah. Just so the you guys didn't take the, uh, the the moment they had to score, and they ended up missing their win. Yeah, and Final. I think the other thing that they did is when they had the ball safe in their own half um, with all the advantages that they had, um, they could have probably got away with making a couple of vanity passes and farming some SPP there, and they didn't. Uh, Imarello has now joined us, so um, we can speak to him. How did that feel uh, for yeah. you? Try, try not to swear uh, on verbal streams. I think that's <laughs> something that uh, I think that's something that the admins mentioned. Yes. Uh, oh, really? Uh, that's... I'm sorry. That's it's alright, it's been, it's been a very minimal amount, so I think no. we're fine. But, yeah. Okay, hey guys. Um, Ted's game. I think I was incredibly lucky with his. I think it was like turn 12, 13. He basically ran out of time and, and was just with the thrower without any cover, mm -hmm. which probably caused the game to be a tie, which I honestly consider a win for me. Um, but yeah, I, I do think that I got, got lucky uh, on a crucial moment, basically. But uh, but yeah, it was fun, um, intense, um, really sort of, my heart is really racing. <laughs> <laughs> how it's going, I think but, you did uh, really well for, for being like a college coach. Uh, well, thank you, I do pr yeah. appreciate it. Um, well, Gaustus has uh, coached me well. We, I think we had like a two and a half hour practice before the game or something. Yeah, there was a, um, there was a couple of things that, um, that I... I realized that I kind of missed out of our coaching session so they were mistakes that were at least as much my fault as they were yours um, but we can go over those later I'm not going to sit here and pick apart your play on the stream um, any more than we already have you can watch it back and see everyone's reactions yeah, I will, to everything for sure. <laughs> yeah Oxford totally will um, but that was a very fun game to watch um, for a nil nil draw it was pretty damn exciting as well so and um, mm. the scatter the scatter was incredibly lucky but you know we kind of debated it and like neither me nor Oxtro would have done it but I think you doing that really saved that game for you so yeah so kudos on having the balls to go for that yeah it was uh, if you're referring to the to the blitz mm -hmm. no sorry the lineman yeah. pickup yeah oh the lineman right. pickup <laughs> I really had no idea what I'm doing, so I just decided to <laughs> go for something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I think because I um when I like I am such a chaos coach. I played like a hundred matches of chaos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, it really pains me to see, um, like orcs and other bash teams not go for the, um, more blocks. Uh, especially like on the LOS, you had only three Blackhawks on the LOS, 
Yeah. Uh, which basically meant that if any of those are pushers, the elf is free. Uh, yeah, and um, that one's on me because that's something that we discussed okay. beforehand. Yeah, fair and, enough. Um, the, fair concern, enough. the concern was that um, the elves would run rings around him if he committed too much forward mm. and he could tie yeah. them up with linemen. I understand. So it was an attempt to kind of keep things a bit more mobile. I think, unfortunately, because of the mistake that was made with caging up so far back, that um, kind of negated the advantage that we were going for with that. And again, <laughs> that's on me for not bringing that up. I think your offensive drive is good. It's just that you have to you have to keep the players on the LOS there because they do double duty as both uh, first time blockers uh, on turn one and also as the screen later on so elves and Skaven and other teams can't just dodge through them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean it's it's something that we'll point out in very obvious terms when we go over the game properly forensically. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and there there are certainly lessons to be learned for next time for both of us. Um, me as a mentor and Amarello as a mentee, but um, I'm happy with the result there. I said beforehand that playing against elves this early when you lack really the skills to be dealing with all the dodging, um, in some respects it's good because you're not facing tons of blodgers and blodgers are horrible, but um, I think a nil-nil result against a high elf team with essentially a fresh orc team is a pretty good result. Yeah, um, and also just, uh, like I thought, uh, I thought that the high elf coach, uh, he did quite well i mean it was 47 blocks versus 41 mm -hmm. so he really <laughs> blocked a lot yeah and i mean he inflicted two in injuries so there's two mng blitzes which is a bit of a headache but um we'll, we'll look <laughs> at, at least that. not a death yes at least that death was apoed so um it's a good thing you got the apo after the last game <laughs> i was really happy about it but yeah at, at that point um i i mean my my when I was trying to progress with the ball, I just got completely stuck, and that's something I really do need to work on. Yeah. Because um, I tend to do the same thing on, well, most of the games I play, that my attack just gets stuck, and I decided to send one of my blitzers out as sort of a scoring threat, as last something that they would focus on, and he ended up well dying. So that went well. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm, I'm so I'm so glad that, that I I got the apple because he was my only blitzer with any SPP so far. So yeah, it would have been devastating to lose him. Yeah. So um, there's certainly things that we're going to take forward from this and work on. Um, and there's a few sort of key moments that I want to have a look at in more detail with you at some point. We'll watch the replay mm -hmm. together or something perhaps tomorrow. Um, and we'll go over it in a little bit more detail and just sort of look at what you could have done. There's a couple of little positional errors that you made as well um, in that mm -hmm. first half that could have alleviated things a lot more. But those are the kind of things that will you will pick up on as soon as I bring them up and you will say, oh yeah, I'm really surprised I didn't see that. So it's just yeah. a kind of learning by repetition thing. Um, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. I can imagine. And I think we had a quite solid plan. It just went out the window real fast when I started playing and just forgot everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's what they, say, though. what they say though. No, no plan, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> also, you were kind of unlucky with uh, not getting very many of the removals on your offensive mm -hmm. drive. I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, although I was lucky that the three KOs didn't come back. So, yeah, yeah. But also, you could, one one could also say that, say that, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you could also say that um, on your offense, you didn't block very much either. Mm. That was oh. that was again something that we looked at. I didn't want to be uh, to have Amarillo just taking blocks for the sake of it because um, uh, it would pull him out of position. Being too aggressive is often kind of um, a bad thing. I think perhaps actually, perhaps we could have gone a bit more aggressive. Uh, <laughs> against elves, the way to win is actually just to take the blocks for the sake of it. Yeah, Especially I agree with you. Have Oshru. On your I don't think I don't think there's such a thing as too much blocks. Like blocks that would put enemy players into into uh, like out of basing, or uh, if you don't follow, it it can't put you out of position. Mm. Is what is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, well, it so, definitely can. It, it but, certainly can. But I I think we um I think I right, think if, if we have some things position, to take forward for sure. Yeah, is what mm. I'm saying. Mm. If they are in position and they don't move, they don't lose the position. Correct. But you wanna, 
you want to move every turn with the ball. Uh, uh, not necessarily. Not necessary, you have eight turns. To, uh, so if you have when, like when you have four turns left. My rule of thumb is that you need to be moving every turn from turn four forwards. Yeah. So um, if you're getting what bogged you say down, you need to be moving. You cut out. You need to be moving. You need to be moving every turn from turn four forwards. So if you're around about the halfway line, around about turn four, you need to be grinding forwards enough so that you can make that last break for the end well, zone on the final turn. Well, the way I explained it to my Kemli uh, mentee is that um, it's a bit, a little bit different with the thrower because he has five movement, but mm -hmm. the Kemli guys have six movement. So all you need to do is get five bases into the opponent's end zone, and then you can score with yeah. two GFIs. Yeah. So as long as you're moving one square into the opponent uh, zone every turn, uh, you'll get there on turn six. Yes, correct. But um, as I said, we've got lots to take forward from this. Um, I will probably call the stream in just a second if anyone would like to give final thoughts. I will... Yeah, good stream. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, pleasure. Yeah, it was a fun stream. Stream. It the stream. Thanks for everything, man. It's... Yeah, ho hopefully I will find the time to do more of these and get people involved, and people can jump on and off as, as they want. It's been a bit chaotic yeah. with three people here, but you've. I'm really sorry about the swearing. I did not know that. <laughs> don't worry about it's it. Fine. I, I don't didn't know. I would have been way more careful if I had. I know it's it's that's the rule in Rebel. I don't know what it is in college, and also yeah, you need to. You need to watch uh, back uh, through the stream, uh, Gaustos. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll have you'll see some interesting stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna catch you guys later. I'm gonna talk to my mentee now. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna so, leave for yeah. a while. Thank you guys. All Bye. Right. Thank you very uh, much, guys. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Cheers. Imanello, good luck on your future matches, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. No Cheers. Problem. Cheers. Thank Bye. you very much. I'm gonna call the stream yeah. there, Imanello. Good luck with mentoring him as well. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Astro. <laughs> That's a challenge. Yeah. Good luck with your crazy Bye. Camry player as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll do well. All right. Yes, for sure. See you guys. Bye. Cheers. Thanks for joining okay. us. All right, I'm Cheers. going to Bye. I'm going to call the stream. I'll just give you like final thoughts, Imarello, about your match. So if you okay. just like to sure. share something, and then we'll call the stream. And we'll have a little chat before we sign off, um, but we won't be live. <laughs> okay, sure. So uh, yeah, final thoughts. Um. Yeah, like I said, I. I, I... Uh, the elf coach i think he was quite good to be honest um and i also think that he played a bit more aggressively than i thought mm -hmm. um and it was just um yeah i, I do remember I, I think it was around four uh, around round four or my turn four or something like that i think i got the ball sort of in the middle of the pitch quite mm -hmm. well but then uh, I, I realized that I have to keep on moving and that's when I think he got like few stuns and I was sort of stuck um, so yeah a lot of lessons to be learned and, and a lot of sort of things to that I need to consider and we like you said need to go through um, but overall I'm I am happy with the result um, I already said before before the game that I would consider Thai to be a win for me um, so I'm relatively happy. Didn't get too much SPP, which is a shame. And I also did lose two blitzers, but luckily my next opponent is all, also pretty <laughs> broken up. <laughs> injury, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, as a final thought, fun game, uh, really exciting, really nervous. Uh, but yeah, all, all good. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, I would echo that. It was definitely a fun game, and um, GG to you, and GG to your opponent as well, Azith, if he watches this back. Um, we will have a quick chat after this, um, and I will call it there, and I will see you guys um, sometime this week for my games. Um, I'm also, I've also decided to take a pro elves team into upstarts, so you'll get to see me failing at playing elves as well. So. Um, Cheers. Um, like I said before, if you are watching the stream and um, you haven't followed me, I would super appreciate if you would because I'm getting relatively close to the affiliate number and following doesn't cost you anything. Um, all it does is just pings you when I go live and you can feel free to completely ignore that if you want to. But getting that little follower boost would be really appreciated. So thank you very much for watching. I will catch you all later. Thanks.